But I think you are developing a full artificial intelligence, which will be the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. Yeah, you said there's lights in the sky? The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's, that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. Minds Radio. Sorry about the late start. Had some uh, timing issues on my end. We got it all corrected. What's happening? This is the show where we talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what they are? Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. Ah... We do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. And, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of conversations going on out there, right? Lots of news, lots of weird stuff, lots of uh, lots of stuff that doesn't get a ton of press, unfortunately. And so uh, this is this is the show where we kind of pick up some of that slack, right? Uh, I'm not a reporter. I'm not, a, I'm not even a very good talk show host, to be perfectly honest with you. But what I am is I'm a concerned citizen. That's what we've always been since we started this show, kind of looking at the way things develop in the world with news cycles and with the way the corporate media is just dishonest in general uh the way they the way they say a bunch of things that uh just kind of aren't true it's it's an unfortunate part of a part of this whole thing and it's it's just not good it's just not good and so we uh, we decided way back in the day uh, a good friend of mine uh, Frank uh, was the original co-host of the show. We decided that we were going to do something about it and talk about this type of stuff. Talk about things that uh, just don't get talked about. And so here we are doing it. Uh, three plus years later, I'm very proud to say, and uh, now on Fringe FM. Speaking of which, we are uh, streaming on Facebook, DLive, YouTube, and Periscope. And uh, like I said, we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. So we're, I'm trying to read chat in all those places. Trying to read chat in on the, uh, the Fringe Discord the Troubled Minds Discord, and all the other places. So if uh, if I miss your chat, well, uh, I'm human. <laughs> I've only got two eyes, two hands, two arms. So uh, I'm doing my best. But uh, we are reading your chat and uh, uh, trying to incorporate that in, Trying to incorporate that as part of the show tonight. And um, that's what's going on. That's what the deal is. And like I said, sorry for the late start, some timing issues on my end. But we got it all corrected. We are all good to go. And uh, that's what's up. That's what's going on. And uh, tonight... Tonight, we can just jump right into it because we're a little bit late here. But uh, tonight, uh, what's on my mind is this. Uh, of course, 
Uh, we, we, as you know, we watch all of the alien news. We watch, we, you know, we keep a really close eye on what's happening in the world of ufology and, uh, you know, whether that stuff could be real or whether that stuff could be fake or government psyops or any of the rest of that stuff. Right. It's just, uh, it's just the way it is. It's, uh, I just don't think that we can take every, anything at face value these days anymore in a world of, uh, what would you call it? Uh, hyper social media, right? Where everybody's trying to become a star by, you know, eating Tide Pods or drinking bleach or whatever the hell's going on out there, whatever kind of dumbness is happening. And it's just, uh, it kind of will show you the lengths that people will go to for, you know, uh, not even a 15 minutes of fame, but for like a five minutes of TikTok fame, which we talked about TikTok last night with the TikTok witches and the TikTok time travelers and all the rest of that. But uh, I think it's a little different. It's a little different today because we're not going to go to TikTok. But you get the point, right? You get the point that it's uh, it's a little bit... Um, uh, what would you call it? I, I I think it's just a little bit discouraging when you watch news cycles and you, 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 you know, as, as when you watch them closely, like I do, cause I do, it's part of the show. I watch very closely. It's part, part of this. It's the extra time I spend, uh, in my day is watching news cycles, watching the things they say, watching how things get repeated, watching how these things come back into vogue after a certain amount of time. And I don't know, like it's uh, it just it just makes me wonder, honestly, if anybody out there has 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 a unique idea, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like like you would expect that we would be we would be uh, we would be well, uh, I don't know, as as a human human species, maybe smarter than we are. I don't know, something like that. In any case, in any case. So so I was you know, cruising the news cycle like I usually do. And what what pops back in today of all of all days? Well, well, why do I say of all days? You'll find out why in just a moment because we're going to talk about this. But the weirdness, this is some of the weirdness of what happened, all right? Let's go straight to this. This is from bigthink.com, all right? I want to link this in the chat and you guys can follow along if you prefer. But this is a notion, right? That's it seems to be as old as I don't know, academia itself, or as old as time itself, right? Uh, Here we go. This is just, yeah, it's just what it is. Uh, Okay, so this is uh, reported by BigThink.com, written by an individual by the name of Alex Berezow, all right? August 17th, that's today. And, and, (laughs) and uh, some other weirdness uh, that, uh, yeah, the headline is this. We are effectively alone in the universe. And so what we're talking about tonight is not just a, well, maybe, maybe an answer. Maybe we have an answer to this, which we'll get to. So I'm going to leave you on tenterhooks while we just discuss this stuff and describe the intro and what's going on in my mind tonight. Cause well, sometimes it's a mess in there, but uh, check this out. Now check this out. <laughs> we are effectively alone in the universe as the article says, just like this. All right. And uh, it, it, yeah. Okay. If it does not matter if intelligent life exists elsewhere, we will never find each other. We will never find each other. All right. That's, that's what, that's what they say. That's what it says right here in the article. And, uh, well, I'm going to read just a little bit of it because what in the world, but all right. So we're actually talking about the age old question, right? The literally the question from the dawn of humankind from, from literally the moment humans could look up at the stars and wonder, are we alone? in the universe because well well (laughs) well what do you think i i think i think the answer is a little bit more obvious sometimes uh but a little less you know like i said in a post-truth world with a hyper hyperactive social media people trying to get their five minutes of fame and you know clickbait and fake ufo videos and all the rest of this right so maybe it's not so cut and dry anymore uh but okay now now here's the here's the crazy part let's just read from this article again so here we go Uh, the debate over extraterrestrials has shifted from fringe to mainstream they say right and we know this we've been paying attention to this we've been doing our due diligence in these summer of saucers as we've dubbed it yeah you know we started the summer with the ufo or uap report released by the government which was supposed to be the information uh, you know we've all been waiting for the government disclosure government disclosure of what 
of well ufos yeah ufos oh you know what i didn't tell you tonight here's what i here, this is what happens when you get like in a, a tech frenzy because there's this problem or that problem you forget very important things and one of the very important things i forgot tonight is to tell you yeah well we are live like i said and we're taking your phone calls so if you want to be part of the show tonight i'd love to hear from you regarding this question are we alone in the universe? Because, of course, it's coming back into the news cycle written by individuals like Alex Berezow here that uh, wrote this article for Big Think about we are effectively alone in the universe. What do you think? So we're going to get to some of the reasons why that may be. And also, hold on to your butts because, well, there was a certain press conference today. Ah, uh, if anybody's been paying attention, well, uh, yeah, uh, today was the day of the big press conference of Anjali. Anybody remember that story? Well, we'll rebrief you if you don't recall or you missed that show or whatever the case may be, which again is another good reason why you should not miss this show, because I'll tell you what, some news and information comes out that nobody talks about that you can hear first right here because, well, we talk about it. But anyway, so the point being are we alone in the universe? The age-old question, if you look up at the stars, right, it seems like this is one of those, really, Michael Strange, this is like the most basic UFO conversation you could ever have. Well, not necessarily, because like I said, we have an answer, probably, possibly, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, point being, we're taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show tonight, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You can join the Discord at troubledminds.org. Click the Discord link and uh, get your ass in here. Come talk about aliens and all the rest of this fun stuff. Okay, so point being, let's get back to this article and keep on trucking. I forgot the, uh, the phone number bit because that's an important part of this. And, all right, here we go. So let's just read some of this. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's see. Um, this guy says, the, uh, thanks to advances in astrophysics, we now know that there are billions of exoplanets in the Milky Way alone, leading most of the scientific community to conclude that life probably does exist somewhere in the universe. All right, cool. Well, this guy's on the right track. Or is he? Now, those who do not believe so are now considered the kooks, right? Because if you don't believe there's life out there, well, I mean, come on now, let's be real. But anyway, the article continues, and while alien abductions are still not in the mainstream, UFOs are. So much that the U.S. intelligence community just issued a report on them, which again is old news. Like we were talking about this the day it happened, the day it happened. All right. So that's what I'm saying. If you want to be on top of the UFO news and uh, just kind of uh, the, the top of this conversation, well, that's what we do. We are literally right on the tip of that spear. We may not know all the answers, but we certainly know how to ask a bunch of the right questions. And that's what we're going to do. So here we go. Let's continue with this article. This is fantastic. Uh, there you go. So he's saying that uh, if you now believe there's no life out there, you're the kook. All right. You are the kook. OK, cool. The academic debate now is not whether life exists, but in what form. Uh oh, many scientists assume that the commonest form of life is microbial, a fair assumption given that on Earth, humans are a relatively modern invention, while microbes have been around for three point five billion years. So many astrobiologists are spending their days examining atmospheres of exoplanets for telltale signs of bacteria like creatures. Still, others have gone further and pontificated on what, if it exists, alien intelligent life might be like. The late Stephen Hawking argued that contacting aliens is not wise, because just like the movie Independence Day, they are probably plotting to come to Earth, break our stuff, and steal our resources. Dr. Hawking warned, quote, one day, we might receive a signal from a planet like Gliese 832C, but we should be wary of answering back. And uh, yeah, okay, all right. So that's, that's going to get us started tonight, right? Now, again, this is an article, and this guy's premise is we are effectively alone in the universe. And like I said, it's semantics, is it not? I mean, when you look at some things and say, okay, so we are, we're alone or we're not. It's a binary proposition, right? It is or it isn't. But now this guy's saying that, okay, yeah, well, maybe, maybe we're alone. And uh, well, maybe we're not like microbial life might be out there however however 
we're effectively alone because we'll never find each other, right? We'll never find each other. And uh, that's what he's saying. That's the premise here of this of this uh, entire paper and what's going on with this. So uh, I just thought it was uh, kind of cute, kind of kind of Gucci goo. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, isn't that adorable? Isn't that so sweet? We're, we're, we're alone in the universe. But we're not alone because if I say alone, alone, I'm the kook. But I can say by mincing my words, hedging my bets, I can say we are effectively alone. Effectively. You see what I'm saying here? It's about, again, it's more like the, more, just how the press does things, right? They literally just... What do they do? They just, uh, they, it's a word salad, right? It's, it's half, half statements. It's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. What's up? Kelly says, man, I'm having, still having major issues on FB. I'm not going to say the word, but you know what he means. They're trying to block the information and sharing of knowledge. Headed to the tube. Yeah, there you go. I like your abbreviations, my friend. <laughs> I do enjoy your abbreviations. Because, well, you know, you don't want to trigger the algorithms and have them freak out. We've been suspended before for less than that. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, point being, right, all the word salads and all, all, the, all the ways to say, well, no, we're not alone in the universe. We are effectively alone, which means that, uh, let's see, uh, we are effectively alone because, well, that's, that's the way it is. We're, we're never going to find each other. I, and I mean, that's a pretty large statement to make. Of course, you have to, uh, you have to really ignore a whole ton of, you know, possible evidence out there. I, like I said, I, I agree uh, because like I stated when we began tonight, it seems like there's a whole lot of uh, people, you know, vying for their five minutes of fame. And even if they have to eat a Tide Pod, drink some bleach, or create a fake UFO video, they're willing to do it. They are very willing to do it. And so to me, right, uh, I'm willing to accept the fact that uh, a ton of those UFO videos that come out are fake. They're fake. They're fake. All right? But doesn't mean all UFO videos are fake. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, you know, like I've seen some things, you've seen some things, some compelling things. There are some compelling cases out there. There's some compelling video. I don't know if there's a smoking gun, but I'm not sure there can be. I mean, we've talked about uh, orbs, people seeing the sky. I mean, Stephen Greer summoning whatever the hell he's summoning orbs or uh, <laughs> Tic Tacs or whatever, whatever they are in the sky, right? Whatever's being summoned. Well, there's that. But then what are they? Like I, I've speculated, we speculated as a, as a group in the past that maybe these aren't craft at all. Maybe these are some sort of like dimensional life form that we perceive as craft, as aerial phenomena, right? Again, remember, they changed the term. It used to be UFO, unidentified flying object. Then they changed it to UAP, which means unidentified aerial phenomena. Now, why? Why? Note, UFO is a flying object, an object, something physical. Phenomena, unidentified aerial phenomena, denotes it could be life itself. It could be an entity. It could be, well, a plasma projection. <laughs> it could be many things, could it not? Aerial clutter, as the report said that came out in June. All kinds of crazy stuff, right? Well, that's what's on my mind tonight. And not, not only because this article came out. I got some good ones that, that are from this week. Some really good ones talking about the existence of extraterrestrials and why we haven't found them. Why they are just not here. All right? So, weird, weird, I know. It's a little bit strange to seem like, well, come on, Michael Strange. You're a little bit ahead of that. Are we really going to ask the question? Are, are, is there life in the universe? Well, kind of, kind of. As always, if you, you stick around for a little bit, you'll get a twist. You'll get a twist because, of course, well, <laughs> that's what we do on this show. Uh, sometimes you're surprised. Sometimes uh, the things we do are not exactly linear. And uh, that's what we're going to do tonight because we had, like I said, today a particular press conference regarding, yep, you guessed it, alien life. Oh, yes, we did. And guess who was there? Almost nobody. Almost nobody. <laughs> Almost nobody. All right, so anyway, uh, as we get to this, what's going on? Is this, 
Are we alone in the universe is the first question tonight. What do you think? Do you think it's a lot more complicated than just a binary yes or no answer? Or do you think this individual has it right from Big Think describing life as we know it in the universe as being, well, what did he say? What did he say? Effectively. We're effectively alone. Yeah, I don't know. You tell me. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Don't go anywhere. More UFOs and life in the universe after the break. Be right back. All right, welcome back to Troubled Minds. I am your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Facebook, DLive, YouTube, and Periscope. And we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. We're taking your phone calls tonight as we talk about is there life elsewhere in the universe? The age old question. Are we alone? Well, depending on who you believe, that answer may have come today in the form of a press conference in Washington, D.C. As you would expect with something like that, the mainstream media completely 100% ignored it. So we'll get to that press conference in a bit here. Like I said, just stretching it out because I don't want to just go straight to it. Uh, But there's some other things. There's some other business to really consider before we even get there. All right. Before we even get there. Now, like we said on Big Think today, today of all days, the day they had a press conference discussing, yeah, an alien base. Yes, that's right. That's right. Again, I, I, uh, I do not vouch for that. I have not seen an alien base with my own eyes. But yes, there was a press conference today describing an alien base here on Earth in the Mojave Desert. And we've been talking about this. We've been looking at this story. We've been thinking about this and considering. And is this possible? Is this actually possible whatsoever? That's the thing here, right? That's, that's the weirdness of what's going on today. On this very same day, we have a press conference in Washington, D.C., D.C., beneath the steps of the Lincoln Monument. We have this from Big Think. We are effectively alone in the universe. Well, which is it? Which is it? <laughs> what's going on? Like I said, and this is, this is what happens when you live in a post-truth world. You get what I'm saying? This is a post-truth world where you get one person saying one thing and you get the, another person saying the exact, exact, exact opposite, exact op- polar opposites in the same day. Big news in the same day. Polar opposites. We're effectively alone. No, sorry. There's an alien base in the Mojave Desert. Well, like I said, you know this is a question show. I'm not asking you or telling you or trying to convince you of what you should believe. You have the reasons for your beliefs without me. You don't need me for any of that. However, if we talk about this stuff and we stay up on the news in ufology and so many other places like we do, well, then this is part of that conversation, part of the larger conversation of are we alone in the universe? Let's go back to this article and keep on trucking. But as always, you guys know the deal. I've got stuff to get to. We can get, we can get to all kinds of stuff, right? We can get to the Fermi paradox. We can get to the great filter. We can get to the zoo hypothesis. I got stuff for days, right? And that's before we even get to this press conference in Washington, D.C., talking about alien bases. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, an actual alien base and an official press conference that happened today. But if you don't want to hear me ramble on and you want to get to the good stuff and talk about what's coming, well, 
please do. Phone number is there. And uh, as you know, I'd rather hear from you. It's uh, a conversation is better going two ways. And uh, that's what's happening here. So if you want to be part of the show, give us a call at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You can click the Discord link and join us there as well. And just uh, hop on in here. Come say hi and uh, be be on the show. Tell us what you think about uh, are we alone in the universe? And again, this is the weirdness. This is the weirdness of this post-truth world we live in. We get this one guy saying, Alex Berezo, who wrote this article on Big Think, and I'm going to put this up again, that yes, we are effectively alone in the universe, right? August 17th, 2021. You would expect, right, maybe a little bit more enlightenment from, well this day and age it is the summer of saucers after all and uh well i don't know here we go so let's read just a little bit more of this article so i can face palm and then we'll get to uh we'll get to why people believe this stuff we'll get to the like i said though this is your show too so if you'd rather have me not kind of drag us back through the narratives of the uh fermi paradox the great filter and the zoo hypothesis which are all fascinating conversations and you'd rather uh, kind of hop in here and maybe take over and talk about alien bases being on Earth. Well, I wouldn't blame you. And so I'm looking for your call if you want to do that. Yeah, 702-957-1037. Here we go. So the academic debate is now not whether life exists, but in what form. Many scientists assume that the commonest form of life is microbial, which we said before, the break here, a fair assumption given that on Earth, humans are a relatively modern invention, while microbes have been around for 3.5 billion years. So many astrobiologists are spending their days examining the atmospheres of exoplanets for telltale signs of bacteria-like creatures. Still, others have gone further and pontificated on what if, what if, if it exists, alien intelligent life might be like. The late Stephen Hawking argued that contacting aliens is not wise because just like the movie Independence Day, they are probably plotting to come to Earth, break our stuff, and steal our resources. And again, I know we, we read this, but I'm just backtracking, following up, and continuing here. Dr. Hawking warned, one day we might receive a signal from a planet like Gliese 832C, but we should be wary of answering back. And this guy continues again. His uh, name is, I'm sure he's a fine fellow, Alex Berezo from Big Think here. He continues, I suppose this is all fun to think and talk about, but the alien debate suffers from a serious lack of perspective, he says. Okay. If there is any chance of humans encountering alien life, at least two extremely unlikely things must be true. First one, he says, life evolves easily. Decades of research have yielded little in the way of identifying the mechanism of abiogenesis, the formation of life from non-living matter, right? Lucky mud. Aren't we lucky mud, guys? Isn't that the way it's termed? We ourselves are golems or lucky mud. Mud with life breathed in from, oh, I don't know, (laughs) whatever you think it is that breathes life into it. But anyway, right? Uh, so yes, in, uh, let's see. Okay. So, uh, there are several different theories on the origin of life and none of them are any good. This individual says in the laboratory, we have had some success in creating biomolecules such as amino acids from gaseous precursors. The Miller Urey experiment is the most famous of these, but scientists have yet to come even close to reproducing life in the laboratory. This strongly implies that life does not evolve easily. Oh boy. Oh boy. The hubris of people, eh? As we try to create life in a laboratory, we should expect it to be an easy venture, I guess. I guess. Anyway, this article continues. Like I said, the hubris of humans. Boy, I tell you. But even if we were to seed the point that life can evolve easily given enough time, there is another problem. The vast majority of exoplanets are in, are in his spot. <laughs> I can't say it are inhospitable to life. There you go. There you go. New research suggests that most stars are incapable of supporting plant life via photosynthesis. Harvesting a star's energy is the first step for the evolution of life, but evolution cannot even get started if there is not enough of it. All right. So, like I said, some face palm is in order. I'm sure this guy's a fine fellow. Um, you know, it is, do, you, do you believe that there's maybe some sort of a different way of... Uh, generating energy from a star other than photosynthesis anybody out there you think there's an alien form of photosynthesis possibly 
come on now, come on. I don't know, right? So like things like this, like like Tam said on the Facebook chat, like this is exactly what's wrong with humans, right? We tend to believe all of the things we believe and say that, you know, humanity, human life is the only type of life that can evolve in the world or in the universe, I'm sorry. And it just seems to me to be, well, short-sighted, let's say. So, okay, and uh, I don't know, alien alien uh of course aliens are going to be different than us right can we be real about that of course and probably like very extremely different like maybe maybe not even carbon based who knows i'm open to those ideas why are people like this not i want to know anyway let's uh we got a phone call thanks for uh, calling in i appreciate it like i said i would rather 100 percent just talk to you guys so if you want to be part of the show tonight we're talking about is there life in the universe the largest question, the biggest question mankind has ever faced. And we have two very differing things coming out on the same damn day. That's right. I'm going to keep teasing it, but we're going to get there. An actual press conference today in Washington, D.C., describing alien life here on Earth. Describing an alien base in the Mojave Desert. That's right. And then we also have this article written by this individual on Big Think, saying, well, no, nah, we're effectively alone. Interesting, right? Interesting, right? Yeah, there you go. MJ's got it right. A type of life that does not need photosynthesis. Yeah. Is it that hard to imagine? I don't think so. Not for me personally. All right. You want to be part of the show? 702-957-1037. Let's go to Robert in Pennsylvania. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you tonight? Oh, fine. How are you? Oh, doing very well. What's on your mind? You you clearly uh, think we're alone in the universe, right? Um, I'm thinking that we're getting, we're getting more so. Um, you're out in Las Vegas. Yes, sir. When you go out and you look at the night and you look at the night sky, is it a, is it a canopy of canopy of stars out there? Yeah, hell yeah. We get nice, beautiful, clear skies. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I've been concerned about something for probably a good bit of the summer. I'm used to going out on my porch, especially in August, right, and looking up at the sky and seeing the Big Dipper and seeing a you know a large expanse of stars. And all I see anymore is like three or four stars up there, and I can't quite put my finger on what why, why is that. Really. Like the like the stars are vanishing from the night sky. Even the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper, <laughs> you know, they're supposed to be very visible at this time of year, and they're just not. And, and I'm too, I, I'm not exaggerating. I see, I look up, but I see, you know, one bright star, and maybe a flicker of three or four other ones, but far from what I've seen every summer. You Interesting. Know, in, in all the years I've lived here. So the only it, reason... Concerned, I, are, they putting, are, are they putting something up in our sky that's in this area that's blocking the stars? That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, somebody in the chat says, uh, Lazy Guy X says smog, maybe. See, out here, uh, we got those California wildfires not too far away. So on some days, you get a big fire in SoCal, we'll get the sky blocked out with smoke. But uh, I'm not so sure that that would be the case where you're at, right? You don't have wildfires raging over there, do you? Oh, no, we don't have, you know, all of our industry went over to China. So <laughs> we don't have any real pollution going on over here. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm in the bowl of the, of, of, the, of the central Pennsylvania region here, and I'm just, I'm just, just baffled um, and a little uneasy about the fact that, you know, this is the first year I've ever noticed where you look up at the sky and you only see a few stars. Something, you know, I know those stars are there because they have to be because they're there for you in Vegas. All right, something is. Something is blocking the stars over in this area. Interesting. Uh, you know what? You know, um, you know what? Now that I'm really thinking about it, so I, I take the dog out uh, really late at night before I finally go to sleep. And I'm going to say, actually, now that I'm really thinking about it, I think, I think you're right. I'm going to pay closer attention because 
when I go out now, I'm, I'm actually thinking back the last several days, a couple of weeks even, and you're correct. I like, I can only remember seeing three stars in the sky because of the same three. I always see, I think it's the summer triangle or whatever it is, but that's all I get, but it may yeah, be my vantage see. point, but yeah, yeah, maybe I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep an eye out. You may be onto something here. Okay. And I would appreciate it. Anybody that's in the chat or, or calls in, uh, if they take a moment, you know, to, to walk outside and see what they can see. I, I'm very much interested in, 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 in what they're experiencing. And as, as far as the topic, you know, if you, if, you, if you hold on to the concept that we create our own reality, all right, that this is all an illusion, uh, this, we're all in some kind of, of holographic something or other, all right, it means that we control what we what there is, you know. We're there, nothing's there unless we see it. Uh, nothing's there unless we mentally, energetically create it. All right. Um, so it's quite possible, you know, that this illusion of a universe that is illusion, all right, and it's quite possible that if that is an illusion, that we haven't bothered yet to create life in a, you know, that can. That, that, that exists anywhere else, right? Um, that's, that's where I'm going with this. So, you know, um, that that, that um, we're in virtual reality. I see. All right, maybe we're inside a computer. Maybe we're inside a computer. Maybe we're all Sims. <laughs> maybe some little 13-year-old is playing a game and we're the Sims, all right, somewhere in the universe. But... I mean, if we create our own reality, then it's quite possible that uh, the universe is just a background that we create, and there's really nothing there. I like it, man. I like it. I like. Uh, I love the way you think. Always outside the box. Always kind of pointing at uh, maybe larger answers to some of the questions I'm asking here. And uh, con- considering, right, this, this whole alien life and maybe living in the simulation, as you've described, that would mean that uh, many of the things that we hold dear and true are really just pixels on a screen or something to that effect. So the, the well, alien question... Us, uh, go ahead, go ahead. We are, we are, we are, we are real, all right, because we're the ones that create the projection of the universe, right? Where we are when we project this reality, that, that, that's the big, big question, all right? Uh, are we some super, super souls or um, are we just one super soul, you know, creating all this, you know, in our imaginations? And, and you know, and, and certainly in, 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 in quantum physics, they, they've, also, they've, they've certainly... Uh, speculated on that, right? It doesn't mean that we are not real. It means that what we see and what we create is not real, right? And it's done, and I've said this before, it's all done for entertainment. <laughs> this is how we entertain ourselves. From where, you know, it's from the edge of the universe, it's projected from the edge of the universe, the whole universe, all right? It's, a, it's, it's, like, it's like Star Trek, you know, they're holograph deck, all right, where it's so, so real, so visible, you know, so clear that you lose any thoughts that you, that you entered some, something that's not real. It becomes real to you. You forget. It's like you forget who you are. And I think that's what's cool. I, I, that's just my speculation on my part. It's possible that the universe has, is teeming with life. But on the other end, if it's not, that would actually cement the idea that the universe is the universe is simply a figment of our imaginations. Oh boy! That's the only way there could not <laughs> be other life in the universe. Right, I understand. I get because what you're being created. I get where you're coming from. So, sorry, go ahead. No, it's 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 that's basically where I'm coming from. I'm 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 telling you that I don't know. If, I'm not saying that that's a fact, but if, if, if the other side of the coin is there is no life in the universe other than our own, and, and even, our, even our lives are imaginary, 
all right? The virtual reality, because we actually exist somewhere else. Uh, <clears throat> we're, 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 that, that would, that would be, that if it's a virtual reality universe, then it's quite possible there's no other life forms, because we are the life forms we created. And we didn't, didn't go through the process of creating other life forms. Because for one thing, if you can't, Nothing, you have to see, you know, nothing, nothing existed unless you see it. You, you know where I'm going with this, right? So if we don't see love and life in the universe, right, we can't create that life. You know, we can't, it's not there. Right, it's, not it's there. A, the sort of manifesting it's like, it's like things. Some people believe, I understand. It's like some people believe demons exist. I personally don't, all right? But and maybe because I don't believe that it's not part of my reality, I don't see them. But I know people who absolutely are adamant that they have, and they probably do have seen those those things because that's part of the reality, right? Uh, if you believe something, it will exist. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, so what do you think about, uh, we'll get to it, but what do you think about the possible existence of an alien base in the Mojave Desert? How does that ring your bell? Excuse me. If, 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 if there really are aliens on this, on this planet, they're pretty well hidden wherever their bases are. All right? And that would probably be underground, probably be in the Antarctic. Be, and, you know, more than likely the most, most likely place that they would be hiding is in the ocean because we don't that's the great un, unexplored area of the planet that we you know we've explored to all the land but we have never really uh even begun to fully explore the oceans and that's probably where they're at if there's anybody um and i, I you know I, I where did this mojave desert thing come from because that's the first time i've heard that on jelly remember that story Oh, the one with the with the with the uh, astral name. Yes, the, the one, name. the one who made contact with aliens in Southern California. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She you had know, a press conference. If her name today. was, if her something name was something like Mary or, or Linda. No, I her, might give her some credibility. But these <laughs> people that that come up with these, you know, these exotic names for themselves. I absolutely immediately, you know, they don't, they don't have any credibility with me whatsoever. They're just, oh, I'm going to wear my robes and, uh, and, and, I, 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 and I'm going to change my name to something mystical, and that way people will believe me. That's, when, when somebody does that, don't, don't even give them your time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just, uh, for whatever reason, they're calling attention to themselves, and, and, and you just wind up feeling foolish. Gotcha. All right. Well, it's too I mean, late. We're already, we're already neck deep in the they're show. Michael I can't strange. change it now. But <laughs> <They're> Michael <laughs> okay. Strange. Now, yes, if you were, if you were, if you were odd and strange, odd strange, I probably wouldn't be watching your show. But you've got a <laughs> common name, first name, Michael. Right. So I'm going to listen to you because you're going to have a certain amount of credibility. But if you change your name to L. L. Roddy or whatever. <laughs> right. From from uh, Venus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Uh, then, then I would then I would assume that you're probably, you know, trying to pull my leg. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, you're up to some kind of scam. Well, I'm gonna get off and get a chance other people a chance to call. But I would really would appreciate if, if some people would call you or at least chat uh about going outside and taking a look at the sky and, and let us know what they're seeing. Fantastic. Because, you know, like I said, I'm seeing four or five stars. Okay. And that's it. And uh, I will keep I will keep tabs right. on this as well. I appreciate the call, Robert. You're the best. Have a, have a great night, man. Thanks for listening. You take care now. Thanks you too. Bye there now. you go, Robert Arend from Pennsylvania. And uh, check out his book, by the way, the uh, Robert Collection: A Stories from a Fractured Mind. You can find it on Amazon. And uh, yeah. So all right, uh, as we continue tonight, uh, that's that is what we're talking about. On Jali today had a press conference in Washington, D.C. Proclaiming the existence of extraterrestrials. Not only that, she claims she's going to lead a camera team back to an alien base. And on this very same day, yeah, that's right, we get this article from Big Think saying, 
we are effectively alone in the universe. You see the problem with hyper-reality? You see the problem with fake news and the world we live in? Yeah, well, strap in. It's about to get more weird. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Don't go anywhere. More Troubled Minds after the break. live on Fringe FM. This is the show where we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. And you know the drill. What are those things we can't talk about? Yeah, that's right. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. Like I said, the show's live. We're taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show tonight, the number to call, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And you can reach us at using the Discord at troubledminds.org, the official website of the show. The phone number is there. The Discord link is there. Come, uh, come join the Discord. Discord's a chat client, a voice client. It's free. It allows us to have international calls all around the world for absolutely free, which, of course, in the Internet age you would expect, but uh, it's not so easy sometimes, is it, to just pick up, pick up your telephone and dial, dial the telly and call the U.K. across the pond? Well, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg. Well, not on Discord. Not on Discord. So uh, if you want to be part of that, please do. The conversation, a chat conversation, and also sometimes a voice conversation goes on uh, 24 hours a day. And troubledminds.org, click the Discord link. And we have another Discord running on Fringe FM. Go to fringe.fm slash chat, and that will give you a direct invite. A different chat room, same program. Come say hi. Come say hi to all the smart folks that are keeping their eyes to the sky, that are considering all the possibilities that aren't just dashing the hopes of dreamers the world over because of what some academic may or may not say. Yeah, those are the types of folks that are in in the Discord, so come say hi. But uh, So anyway, what we're talking about tonight uh, as we began, and a great call from Robert, thank you for uh, kicking us off with the phone calls, uh, we're, we're talking about the existence of life in the universe. Do you think we're alone? Do you think we're alone? And I, I you know, I, I think clearly we have a, an alien logo as, as the, uh, the Troubled Minds logo. So, I mean, clearly, you know what I think. I think we're not alone for sure, 100%. But uh, what uh, I'm still open to what that means, okay? I think there's a, a larger conversation that could happen there. So, there we go. All right. Uh, so, that's, that's what's on my mind tonight. We had this article written by uh, BigThink.com by an individual by the name of Alex Berezow. And he says this, we are effectively alone in the universe. And his premise in this article is basically that even if there is intelligent life out there, we're so far away from each other that we'll just never find each other. So far away from each other, not just in space, but also in time, meaning that um, it took us three billion years to... uh, to, uh, you know, evolve on this planet, so we're told. And so, you know, other life forms may have actually come and gone a long time before us or that will come a long time after us. It's hard to say. It's really hard to say, isn't it? Uh, but, which of course would be the Fermi paradox, which would be the, uh, the great filter for, 
for intelligent civilizations in, in the universe, all right? Or, uh, which we can get to, possibly, maybe they are here, and the zoo hypothesis is another option, which we can talk about tonight. But as you know, instead of uh, dragging you through the weeds of some of these maybe uh, less exciting topics, uh, we could talk to you. And if you want to be part of the show, like I said, 702-957-1037. But let's go through this article real quick, just just to make sure we're on the, on the, on the right page as we, we reboot the second hour here. Yeah, so thanks to advances in astrophysics, we now know that there are billions of exoplanets on the Milky Way alone, leading most of the scientific community to conclude that life probably does exist elsewhere in the universe. Yay. However, those who do not believe so are now considered the kooks. And while alien abductions are still not in the mainstream, UFOs are. So much so that the U.S. intelligence community just issued a report on them, which we've talked about quite a bit. We were one of the first to talk about it that same day it happened. And uh, there you go. Tam's got it right. Tam in the Facebook chat. Big think should think bigger. (laughs) Indeed. Indeed. And uh, there you go. There you go. Let's see. Uh, Here we go. All right. Um, Okay. 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 All right. So anyway, as we as we continue trucking and talking about this stuff, that's the question tonight. It is the biggest question in the history of humankind, is it not? Are we alone in the universe? And while this individual thinks we're you know, from big think of all places, we are effectively alone. And of course, like I said, it's semantics in the media. It's, you know, you can't say we're alone because, you know, there could be microbial life somewhere. Well, when you say effectively alone, it means that there's probably life out there. However, uh, distances are so vast in the universe that we'll never actually meet meet up with them, right? Time and space are just too vast, and that's that's the answer here. Well, I mean, you know, uh, there's that. But of course, I don't know. On the same day that this article comes out, which is today, by the way, <laughs> Tuesday, if anybody's keeping track, Tuesday in August, it's the 17th, actually. And we had a press conference, all right, from... Let's see. Let's get this. I think I can get this. Let's put this up on the screen one moment. And yes, this is from Reddit. And yeah, there you go. You don't believe me? Well, now you can believe me. This is it right here. This was what happened today. All right. This is from Reddit, the Transcension Project. Anjali's press conference details. Hello, beautiful people. Here are the details of the press conference. Tuesday, August 17th. 2021. Yep, that's today. 10 a.m. Eastern, location, Lincoln Memorial, Washington, D.C. There it is. If you guys haven't seen it, well, there is the actual details of the press conference that happened today. It actually happened. So this was uh, actually... uh, 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 Well, it's been it's kind of been floating out there. I've been keeping my eye on it because, well, that's what I do. Uh, Would uh, would you even know about this if it wasn't for me? Maybe, maybe not. That's why we get together and talk about weird stuff, because, well, the mainstream media isn't going to talk about it. That's for sure. But check this out. Right. We will be located outside on the lower steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Indeed, that's where it happened. It will also be streamed live on multiple podcast platforms, which will be announced with links provided ahead of time. I am unable to vaccinate due to my health. We ask that anyone from the public who attends the event to please wear CDC-approved masks to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and COVID-19 Delta. Only individuals who are wearing a mask will be allowed access to the area where the press will be staged. Thank you for understanding. Be mindful of your intentions and love everyone you see. On Jolie. There you go. And so, of course, yeah, did it happen? Yeah, you're damn right it happened. You're damn right it happened. Here's a YouTube video, right? This is them setting up. There's Anjali right there on the screen, and uh, they're getting going, right? Yeah, I've got this link. I'll, I'll get it to you in just a sec, and we'll talk about this in the second half of the show here. But point being is that uh, there's an individual that says there's an alien base located right here on Earth. She's made contact with aliens, and not only that, and, 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 and. She's collecting a team of professionals together, camera people, to go to the alien base and get us footage. Yeah. Hmm. Right? I don't know. You tell me. Do you think this is weird? So in the same breath where we have this article come out from Big Think, like Tam says, yep, they should think bigger, for sure, that we are effectively alone in the universe. On the very same day this article comes out, we have a press conference in Washington, D.C. from Anjali stating that, yes, aliens are here. 
aliens are real. She even described them. She's been in contact with them. She's seen them. She's been to their base. If we're to take her word for this. Now, this is the thing that gets me about this story. All right. Now, there's a couple, a couple reasons, a couple things, right? So, thinking about it, why does it get all the, all the uh, attention? Why does, it, why does it grab my attention, right? Because I, I've, I've uh, you know, rolled my eyes at way less than this. But here's the thing. You get experiencers, right, that, that can tell you a story. But it's a personal experience, all right? And, and I don't have anything against that. I understand everybody lives a different personal experience. But if you get a personal experience where somebody says, I was abducted by aliens, all right? Something like this, right? I'm just, just a generic story to throw out there, for example. Well, okay, you can't replicate it. Many times you don't have evidence that it happened, and so we have to take your word for it, right? Which is fine. Like I said, I, I'm not against that. Like, you, you, should, you, should, you should step up. And you should tell the truth if this happened to you, and uh, I'm willing to listen to that. Okay? So don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not crapping on that. Trust me. But what I am saying, what makes this particular instance different, is we have this individual kind of coming out of the shadows, putting her face on camera. She's actually given us her actual real name, her maiden name, her married name. Like, like basically, people are starting to do background checks on this woman, Anjali who held a press conference today in Washington, D.C., all right? And so the thing that catches my attention is that it's not just a personal experience where you say, okay, well, I saw the aliens, and I saw their base, but they've moved the base since then, right? She's not even making that claim. She's saying that the aliens are in contact with her, and they have approved disclosure to happen. They've approved her to come to their base, to an alien base, with a camera crew, to gather data, to make first contact, as it were, to ask questions, et cetera, so on. Now, tell me, right? So even Travis Walton or Betty and Barney Hill or, I don't know, pick, pick whatever story in the UFO mythology that may or may not be compelling to you. Let's say uh, just whatever your most personal compelling UFO story is. Maybe it's your own. Maybe you actually experienced this if you're out there listening to me. But okay. So whatever that happens, what, well, whatever happens with that, those people can't replicate it. Travis Walton can't snap his fingers and get reabducted by aliens in Snowflake, Arizona, or just outside of it. Betty and Barney Hill can't, well, they're passed away now, but they couldn't snap their fingers and just reenact the abduction, right? They couldn't bring us anything, right, other than testimony, okay? There's some corroborating information and witnesses and things like this, right, depending on which case you're talking about. However, now this young lady, Anjali, says that not only did she make contact with extraterrestrials, she went to their base, she's getting a camera crew together, and she's going to take us there. She's going to get footage, real-life footage, of aliens. And yeah, what? You know what she described one of them as? A, an eight-foot, lavender, beautiful mantis with shimmering skin or shimmering what would you call the skin of an alien <laughs> what would you call that anybody know shimmering exoskeleton i don't know but right so she's not only describing specifically there were different types of aliens she knows where to find them and she's going to can get a camera crew and take us back there all right i promise these are claims being made by somebody now what makes it different for me is that it's not just a personal account it's not just well, it happened, and I'm sorry I don't have any proof. She's still making the claim that they've approved her to show up with the camera crew. So let's see, right? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> What's up, Doombot? I see you guys in the chat. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think, uh, I think there's, a, there's a bunch of weirdness. What's up? Uh, Tam Bam says, I think Anjali has a big red target on her back right now. And that could be. That could very well be. So in several weeks' time, so we, like I said, we would uh, pay attention to this when it happened. And today was, today was the day. 
Today was the actual day of this alien press conference, and it happened. There's a YouTube video. They streamed it. They live streamed it. All right? And so, I don't know, I ask you, do you believe claims like this? How much hope should we have that we actually get real footage of eight-foot-tall lavender mantis aliens? Should we have hope for that? <laughs> What's up, Ronald? In face on Ronald on Facebook says, either she found an alien base or found some peyote, right? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Cherry says she's a setup, a plant. Yeah, it could be. It could be. And that's what I'm talking about, right? Is this disinformation? She did work for the government famously. Uh, that's a good question. Let's see, Billy. Billy's, Billy's on, the, on the case. How does she go in the mountain in a wheelchair? Because, well, of course, in the conference today, the press conference, she was in a wheelchair. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, Okay. What's up, Elusive Air? I see you there. Uh, Bleakson, how you doing? Hopefully she doesn't disappear. Exactly. So anyway, all right. So that's that's really what we're talking about today. In the very same day, and this is this is more of my my example of not just media, but uh, the fake news media world that we live in, right? The, the hyper reality, as it were, meaning that uh, in the exact same day, we have two literally completely polar opposite claims. This guy from Big Think again by the name Alex Berezo. He wrote this article. We are effectively alone in the universe. We read some of this. I'm not going to continue to bore you with this. There's more details that go along with this. But on the day this article comes out, we have a press conference in Washington, D.C. talking about, yeah, actually going to an alien base. So you guys tell me. I don't know. What are we supposed to believe here? And Joe says, what's up, Joe in Florida? Uh, In a wheelchair? What is she? Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Xavier? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Xavier. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Let's see. Yeah. Lavender. MJ. Lavender. Yeah. That's what what she said. Okay. Anyway. Let's see. Um. Uh, let's see. All right. All right. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's, that's the question tonight. What do you, what do you expect to get out of this? Uh, do you really believe Anjali is going to lead us to a, an, a mountain base full of aliens and uh, looking to hear from you? So I'm having a good time talking about it, but I would have a much better time if you guys called and uh, gave me your take on this. It, what do you think? So my soft tentative prediction is that uh, they're going to go there and I'm going to say the aliens have moved out. All right. That's going to be my tentative prediction. But uh, I, 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 I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. I want to see lavender eight foot tall mantis beans, right? That's what I want to see. But well, uh, will we, I don't know. But what do you think? Like I said, I can talk about this stuff for, for hours because that's what I do. But if you want to be part of the show, give us a call 702-957-1037. Jump in the discord. Love to hear from you guys. What do you expect to, to get out of this? Do you really think that, uh, it's not, uh, just another dumb TikTok scam as uh, Matt, Matt has said, well, I mean, she doesn't seem to be a, a TikTok type, but yeah, uh, <laughs> you guys are hilarious in the chat. No, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this. And so, uh, I am cautiously optimistic. And so that's why, like I said, I've, I've put my nose up in the air at things far less than this in outrageous claims. But for right now, uh, what do we expect? What do we expect? I don't know. You tell me. And I'd uh, love to hear from you. 702-957-1037. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into some boring, more boring stuff because, well, that's just the way it is. Here's another one. This is from sciencefocus.com. And this came out uh, recently as well. This was uh, today. And so, look, on the same day, we have Anjali giving us uh, information about a, an alien base, and they're actually going to uh, be doing what they're doing. We have the first article from Big Think, and then we also have this. Now, Carl Sagan, uh, actually famously, uh, I think it was actually Stephen Hawking, uh, famously said that uh, we should be careful about actually making contact with aliens. If we get a signal from them, we should, uh, we should probably ignore it, because who knows, maybe they're searching for us, waiting for us to answer back so they can go, aha, got a fish on the hook, we're going to come get them, right? Well, here we go. This is one from Science Focus, written by an individual by Lord Martin Rees. I always say, don't trust somebody with a... <laughs> Lord in front of their name. But what do I know? I mean, Lord Vader, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, anyway, uh, I, I jest. That was a joke. Okay. Are we alone is probably the question astronomers get asked most often by the general public, straight from this article. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence is surely worthwhile, despite the heavy odds against success, because the stakes are so high. 
That's why we should welcome Breakthrough Listen, a 10-year commitment by Russian-Israeli investor Yuri Milner to buy time on some of the world's best radio telescopes and develop instruments to scan the sky in a more comprehensive and sustained fashion. But even if the search succeeded, and a few of us would be bet more than 1% on this, it's unlikely that the signal from aliens would be a decodable message. It would most likely constitute a byproduct or even a malfunction of some super complex machine far beyond our comprehension that could trace its lineage back to alien organic beings on a planet whose evolution might have had a head start a billion years relative to that of Earth. I don't know. Um, I think that's the weirdness of this is... So this article goes on to say that uh, if we have the chance to reach out to aliens, should we? Should we? That's the question. And so I don't know. Do you do you believe the threat narrative? Do you think we should reach out? And uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I know Billy says, man, I just can't put my finger on it. Does anybody remember this Anjali story, but by somebody else? Not that I recall. Like I said, uh, we've we've been talking about different uh, UFO experiencers and uh, all these mythologies and folklore for a long time on this show. And I, I, I can't think of a single one where somebody was literally saying, I'm going to take you back to the alien base. How about Phil Schneider? Maybe that's the one you're talking about, where he was lowered down into an alien base inadvertently and they had a firefight with aliens. Well, he wasn't able to lead us back to that because he said it was on government property. And of course, they wouldn't let us back in. Well, this is not what she's saying. It's different. That's the only thing I can think of that's even remotely close. But anyway, so uh, what do you guys think? What do you expect to get out of this? And like I said, on the same day of all places, we get all this, all this exact, like exactly today. It's almost like it was meant to be counter propaganda is kind of my point. Do you think there's a conspiracy in the news? And the way I find it, right? So I search many different ways when I go through the news cycles and I do a basic search, just a straight Google search, DuckDuckGo, different search engines with the same search terms because I want to see what pops up. What happens if they're trying to manipulate news cycles, right? I also have different ways of finding them. I, I use uh, their own search engines against them and have them send me key terms that I put in. I do it a lot of ways, right? Because I want to I make sure that uh, the things I talk about have some basis in uh, not just, well, news reality, which of course we know, <laughs> news reality, but how about uh, in... Well, maybe propaganda and maybe in uh, them trying to fool us or make us believe something or something else happens. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's what I mean. That's what I'm talking about tonight. And uh, on the same day, we have our aliens real and we have a press conference that basically that none of the mainstream media showed up for. You saw there was like it looked like there was a dozen people there or something. And, uh, well, I'll play some of the video as we go tonight, but, uh, but yeah, that's what, that's what's on my mind tonight. As we continue talking and thinking about this, I don't know, is this actual propaganda that's describing, well, uh, we're trying to counter the claims of one Anjali that says she knows where an alien base is and yep, in the coming weeks, she's going to take us there. She's going to take a camera crew and we're going to get all the things, all the evidence we've ever asked for, because that's right. You better believe it. She said a nine, sorry, eight foot tall lavender mantis alien. I don't know. You tell me. Like I said, if this sounds crazy or nuts, you're like, what is this guy talking about? Well, you're in the right place. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange, 702-957-1037. Looking to hear from you. Don't go anywhere. More aliens, <laughs> lavender mantises, alien bases, and you after the break. Be right back. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. We are streaming on Facebook, DLive, YouTube, and Periscope. We are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And we're taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show tonight, we're discussing. That's right. Is there life in the universe? On the same day, we have a press conference in Washington, D.C. Describing an alien base, a lavender, eight-foot-tall mantis alien... And, well, we also have articles coming out in the mainstream media refuting the fact that there's life on Earth. Or, sorry, <laughs> not life on Earth. Let's say intelligent life on Earth. No, I'm just kidding. Refuting the fact that there's 
alien life out there at all. I find it odd. I find it coincidental. I find it uh, synchronistic that uh, we do know there are intelligence agencies out there that try and watch the news cycle with particular information and uh, lead narratives one way or the other. It is curious that we have a, again, somebody that says, hey, I've got proof of aliens. This is actual disclosure, actual first contact, as it were. I'm going to take you there. It was a press conference and none of the media showed up. Weird, right? So is she just that far off off the beaten path here? Is she really just making wild claims? Anjali is her name, by the way. Uh, that's the moniker she goes by. And her name is actually very close to that, by the way. It's An- Angelia, Angelia or something like that, her actual name. So uh, anyway, the plot thickens. But yeah, looking to hear from you guys tonight. If uh, you want to be part of the show and talk about this alien disclosure stuff, do you think that there is a conspiracy in the media to cover up? Again, more of this establishment government cover-up of the existence of extraterrestrial life. This is like Fox Mulder's wet dream, is it not? This is literally like, what in the world are we doing here? All right, so anyway, so if you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. You can click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. Let's go to James. James in Michigan. Thanks for calling, my friend. How are you tonight? I'm okay. All right. Great show. Thank you, thank you. What what do you expect to get out of this uh, this alien press conference thing? Do you think that uh, there is a conspiracy in the news media to maybe cover this up, or do you think this woman may just be confused? Let's say. Well, here's uh, a surprise for you all. Maybe I have no idea. Um, I I don't know. I mean, I think I don't think we should really judge either way until. Um, she either does something or she doesn't. I mean, um, so that's as far as that goes, that's all I can say about that. Um, and I mean, there's conspiracies in the mainstream media to cover up or to promote all kinds of things. So I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they stay away from it for whatever reason. Um, well, whether they know it's not true or whether they do, I, you know, I can see them covering it up either way. Yeah, well, I'm with you. I, I get it. Like, I, I'm going to suspend my, I'm suspending my disbelief, and I'm hopeful that maybe we see something we've never seen here before. That would be amazing, would it not? That's what I'm hopeful for. But yeah. really, my common sense says to me, well, hold on, Mike. But that's okay, right? That's what we do. We kind of suspend our disbelief, drink a bunch of the maybe juice. And that's what we do. We talk about the, uh, the, uh, the whatever it is. We talk about all the crazy stuff. So, yeah, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, so what yeah, about uh, yeah. life on Earth? Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, James. I was just going to say that article about effectively there not being any life. That just that like annoys me because that's not really saying anything. That's just a a way to be vague about everything. Because I don't know. I feel like it. Uh, how do they know that, that that we would never see if there was life out there? We would never see it. Never is a long time. Never is a long time. <laughs> Truer words never spoken, my friend. Yes, it is, a, it is a very long time. And I think that's part of this is that, uh, you know, like, like when you make sweeping statements like that about, oh, well, that'll never happen. Come on, get out of here. Right? Get out of here, people. And these are supposed to be scientific yeah. writers or scientific people or uh, hubris, man. Human hubris. It's a thing. It's for sure a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, so, so I know. Uh, like, like, uh, did you did you hear the original show when we talked about her her initial story, this Anjali story, how she came to meet the aliens and all the rest of that? I feel like I've caught part of it. I think I, I feel like it, that sounds familiar. It might have been just when I first started listening. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was several weeks that. back. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. So we, we can uh, revisit that. I'll link that show down, by the way, if you guys haven't seen it. Like I go through, Ash was on that show, and we go through the entire thing, the entire uh, story of how she actually met with these aliens. And we, we suspended calls for the first, uh, I think, uh, full hour just to get through the whole story to make sure it was uninterrupted and you guys got exactly from the horse's mouth or from the house of uh, the mouth of Anjali. Uh, don't mean to call her a horse. I don't mean it like that. It's a saying. Please forgive me. But you get my point. So anyway, uh, I will link that show down below. And uh, it's it's a thing. Apparently, it's a thing. Is it a real thing? I don't know. But anyway, I appreciate you uh, taking one for the team, James, and giving a call. Even though, like I said, it's not your expertise. You don't even know. Guess what? I don't either. It's okay. Anything else while we got yeah. your phone tonight, my man? 
You know, I, I do I do remember that show now because I, I, yeah, it does as as we talk about more, it does sound familiar. So, and I, I that was one of the first ones I heard, and I, I liked it. So, yeah, I think it's I think like you said, the big thing is the the whole thing, the problem with broad state broad statements or generalizations. Um, I I I feel like the only way that that the, everybody on the planet will ever really know if, if any of this stuff exists is if most people have experiences and that's just not happening yet. On the other side, I think it is real because there are too many experiences people have had over decades now. And then if you want to look back into, you know, historical records and mythology and this and that, it could go back a lot further. I, I think there is something out there, you know, there, there's, there's, like I said in the chat, you know, I think ghosts and aliens and all different kinds of beings are real. It's just they're not, not everybody experiences them. So I think it's going to take direct experiences with a lot of this stuff for that view to change. Exactly. I agree. So uh, like I said, I'm hopeful here. Is it going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. But we're, uh, we're, we're uh, waiting uh, on bated breath for the other shoe to drop here. And hopefully it's not an empty mountain pass where she says well they were here <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case but anyway I, I appreciate you uh taking one taking a grenade for the team jumping on the grenade appreciate the call my friend james salcedo salcedo paranormal check out his podcast thanks again for helping out my friend i appreciate it a lot thank you thank you have a great night simple as that what do you guys think alien base in the mountains is life uh out there in the universe real you tell me 702-957-1037 uh taking your phone calls what do you think about this stuff let's go to i'm not sure who this is uh welcome to the show what's your first name where are you calling from hey man this is billy i'm calling uh out of virginia billy in virginia what's up my man what's on your mind tonight hey man i just had to call in on this one uh the, the whole this whole thing of you know taking us somewhere into the mountains. Like I want to believe it, but like you said, my common sense is just screaming bullshit. I can, uh, I can't no. help that. I just have a feeling as okay. soon as we go in there, she's just going to be like, we have to mentally contact them now. Nobody's going to be there, you know, like some Greer stuff. But, um, and like you also said, the prop, the propaganda thing here, it does seem like we're pushing the narrative into there's really nothing there. I don't know why it's flipped like that, but it just seems that way. If you look at, let's say to the stars Academy, right? They took over all the time to learn things. And finally, you know, a couple of videos that they put out a few months back is Dr. How put off talking about, now we're going to use lasers to speed up craft to light speed. And it, it, it's just, it's bullshit. I can't stand it. Yeah, well, uh, and that's the thing, right? Another, like, people making claims that they can't back you. up, right? People making claims they can't back up. I'm with you. I'm with you. Please, can you say BS instead of the actual word? We're on the radio. Please don't curse. But go, go ahead. Oh, tell, yes, tell, sorry. Thank sorry, you. Sorry. You're cool. You're cool. Okay. So tell, tell me what else. Tell me what else. So it, it, is, it is frustrating when people make these huge claims and can't back them up. Very much like you said, TTSA, Tom DeLong, he said, hey, look, we have the technology to, to defeat gravity. We have anti-gravity tech, right? We're blasting these, the, yeah. the, the magnesium thing with like terahertz and it's like losing mass and it's like floating. Okay, bro. It's been years. Mm -hmm. Where the hell is it? Right? This is what I'm saying. Right. It seems like we live in just this right. bizarre ass well, psyop where people make these ridiculous claims and we never get anything for it. But go ahead. Anything. Anjali, if this is true, why aren't we there now? If, if it's true, we would be there right now. Instantly. Right? You would think. If aliens are sitting in a mountain, what are we doing sitting here? <laughs> there should be an army heading to that mountain right now whoa 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 on the army <laughs> whoa whoa well, you know that, yeah, yeah i got you maybe not a military style right. army but an army right. nonetless army um, i people. mean you, this stuff is 
just riddled throughout the whole ufology. I mean, you have Richard Doty talking about we put legs on the Tic Tac Tac craft, so when the Tic Tac was in an operation, it wouldn't fall over. Right. In the Nimitz encounter, everyone on that ship, including Alex Dietrich, saw legs on the Tic Tac craft, which means that Nimitz encounter was the American run Tic Tac. So the whole thing, it just seems like they're guiding you into a direction which isn't the truth. Exactly. Propaganda. For whatever reason, whatever whatever mm-hmm. it happens to be. And like I said, if you pay attention to the news cycles, like I said, it seems to be the same stuff kind of coming through, and then it fades. And then something the opposite will come through, and then it will fade, right? So we had, That's basically, exactly right. for the whole summer, we had, oh, the, the, the government UAP report. Everybody was like, like I said, I'm calling it the Summer of Saucers. Shout out to the Night Stalker out there for dubbing the name, right? It's like we were in a fever pitch. Like, oh, the aliens, the aliens, the governments are telling us about aliens, right? But now suddenly, mm-hmm. at the end of the Summer of Saucers, we have literally, it culminates in this press conference on the steps in front of the Lincoln Monument. And no press shows up whatsoever. There's no Fox News, there's no right. CNN, there's no MSNBC, there's no nobody. And then yeah, on the same day, like on the same say. day, the news cycle starts putting it back out there, peppering it with, well, here's the reason we're alone in the universe. Weird, man. It's weird. I'm telling you. Right. I'm telling you. <laughs> Something's up, right? Something's up. Right. Well, I'm, I'm going to leave you with this thought. That I've, I've been thinking this way, and I know a lot of you people do think this way, and some don't. But do, do you think that maybe... It's a good thing. We don't know. Do you even think if this technology came out, could the world handle it? If we had that tech, would the world just go into chaos or is it better to create that kind of society without our savage like society in on it? Um, That's that's what what I'm going to do. You at right there. Okay. Okay. I appreciate the call, Billy. You were the best. Uh, you're, you're the Billy on YouTube, right? You're the Billy in the chat there? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Always good stuff from you. I appreciate the, the smart questions in the chat. Uh, thank you for the call. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for all the amazing chat. Thanks for that question. I'll answer that question. Uh, I appreciate it, well, my man. Thank you, man. Great show. Zach. Catch you later. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Billy in Virginia. Appreciate that. Uh, he's on uh, YouTube there. If you want to say hi to Billy, appreciate the phone call. Now, the question, I think, uh, you know, should we know? Right? Should we, sh- even if it was within our grasp to make contact with aliens now, where again, this Anjali says that it's within our grasp. We have an alien base in the Mojave Desert, and she's going to take us there with a camera crew, and we're going to get all the scientific data we want, and our, our knowledge will be sated, right? Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's the truth. I just don't know. Because, well, uh, like, like I said, it seems like we've been down similar roads before. And, uh, but the question asked by Billy there is, is, should we? If we have that opportunity, should we pursue it? Uh, would it cause folks to freak out? Folks to stop paying their taxes and stop going to work? And right, will, will people be listless and lose their sense of identity within the universe because there's actual aliens out there? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Like that's, that, that's the, one of the reasons cited, one of the main reasons cited why uh, the government hasn't given us, you know, the complete answers here. Because uh, it's said that, uh, you know, people won't be able to handle it. People will lose their religions or of a sort, or uh, people will, right, uh, this type of thing. People will, uh, you know, stop. The, the, the meaning of being a human will cease in a larger sense because we are no longer unofficially the center of the universe. You get what I'm saying? It's a good question. I don't know. Like to me, I'm ready. Like I've I've tweeted to to those George Knapp, Anjali. Hey, I'll go. Like I live close. Like I probably like a four hour drive from wherever they're talking about. Maybe less. And I'm like, hey, if you want people to go, I will go. Let's find it out. I don't know. Like I'm I'm not afraid of that. Like think about it. Some people are like 
don't want to talk about it or think about it. I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. I want to see. I want to be able to walk in there with that camera crew with my own little personal camera and my notebook and my transcriber and whatever. And I'm, I'm going to get my own data too. I want to do it. I want to do it. So I don't know. Like, that's the question. Are we actually ready for this? If this is real, if alien contact is within, well, just a few hours drive, should we? Should we reach out to that? I don't know. Uh, Billy says, I just playing devil's advocate. Great show. Thank you. Appreciate that. It is a good question. It is a good question. And I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But anyway, still taking your phone calls if you want to be part of the show. If we're, if, uh, we're not interested in this, well, then I'm just going to, you know, like I said, I'll end it at 9 o'clock. So if we don't start getting phone calls now, like I said, it's not above me. It's not below me, I mean. It's not below me to, to start extorting people. Uh, then we'll just end the show. So uh, there you go. Uh, we got about uh, nine minutes left, and that'll take us to 9 o'clock, top of the hour. That's our obligation, and that's what we'll do. Uh, what's up, Mary? I see you there in the chat. But yeah, give us a call, 702-957-1037. So let's add that question to the bucket of questions tonight. If we were able to reach out and be part of uh, the whatever the Galactic Federation or whatever it happens to be, right? Whatever we're talking about, should we? Do you think that uh, it, it would be dangerous to us? Do you think that society as we know it would break down? Would break down? Yeah. I don't know. You tell me. I don't think so. I, I, like I said, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to look with my own damn eyes and see for my own damn self if this is real or not. If I get invited, I'm going. I'm going. And so that's it. Clearly, they won't invite me because one, who am I? Right. But I don't know any of those people, but still. Right. If they're like, oh, we're going to do a random drawing and take some random YouTubers with us. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> if, uh, if, if they want to, they want an ambassador to the Galactic Federation, Galactic Federation of Worlds. What's up, Catalina? I see you there in the French chat uh, that. Uh, well, we could do worse than myself, couldn't we? Yeah, let's try this. Let's try this. <laughs> I don't know. You guys tell me. Anyway, a few minutes left here on Fringe, 702-957-1037. You tell me. Should we be worried about contact with potential contact with aliens, assuming they're right here in our backyard? And uh, it's, it's coming. Either the greatest hoax of the century is on the way, which, again, uh, this Anjali person hasn't really tried to make any money off of this. She's giving away, uh, giving away her book. She's not selling it. So I don't know. You guys tell me. I don't know what, where this is going to lead. Like I said, I'm cautiously hopeful, but my common sense is punching me in the face and saying, come on, Mike. There's going to be no aliens in that cave when they show up. But what do you guys think? I'm always willing to be, uh, um, uh, I'm always willing to be wrong. I'm always willing to be surprised. And that's, that's you know, I think that's part of, part of a good human experience here. That, uh, you know, it's a, we shouldn't get too entrenched in our indoctrinated ways because, well, humans are flawed. Humans are wrong. That means you. That means me. That means all of us. So, when, like I said, uh, always be suspicious of people bearing the answers. People have the answers. You should run far away. Far away. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so there we go. I don't know. Uh, so much stuff to think about here. Like I said, uh, I'll, I'm going to go uh, substitute teacher on you guys and just play some of that press conference in the, in the third hour if nobody calls. And I'll just take the rest of the night off because, well, what can you do, right? If nobody's interested, nobody's interested. Thanks, Billy. Thanks, uh, James. Thanks, uh, Robert. I can count them on one hand. Three calls tonight. Three calls. One, two, three. All right. Well, I guess nobody's interested. 702-957-1037. I thought this would, this would be one of those uh, holy smack roll moments where everybody's like, yeah, what's up? Let's go. Let's find the aliens. And I don't, I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, I'm just kidding. We do have a phone call. See, my extortion works. Let's go to, uh, welcome to Troubled Minds. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is uh, Cal from uh, Minneapolis. Cal in Minneapolis. What's up, my friend? Welcome to the show. What's on your mind tonight? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, well, I mean, the story that uh, we're talking about tonight with uh, is Anjali and uh, her whole thing with the aliens in the caves. I mean, with everything going on uh, in the world right now with the Rona, with uh, Afghanistan and everything, this might be a potential false flag. I don't know. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Like, it would be cool if it was real, but... I don't know. And the fact that no other news story, uh, uh, no other news reporters or whatever showed up, like that's a little suspicious, but I'm sure um, other news channels are covering, you know, the other big current topics. So 
I don't know. I guess we'll see. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think it, so this, now this is the weird part. You would think at least some, like, you know, kind of maybe mid-level media outfit would show up, right? Like, like, some, like aliens get clicks for crying yeah. out loud, right? Aliens get clicks. That's money. Mm-hmm. And so it is right, odd exactly. that nobody showed up. That's weird, man. That's weird. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, there's some, there's some, again, like my common sense is punching me in the face and saying, no, Mike, back off the edge. But then I'm seeing some other things here right. that you would expect at, I mean, this is literally probably what, the first ever press conference where somebody claims, hey, I know where an alien base is and I'm taking you there. And nobody shows up. Yeah, exactly. That's weird. That is weird, dude. I mean, that, that's pretty wild. It, it's wild. It's very wild. So, you know, like heightened suspicion and everything. But uh, I don't know. I, I mean, if you get a response from her or someone tied to her, I'd go out there. I mean, heck, I'd make the trip from Minneapolis, if, you know. And maybe we end up going there and we just see a bunch of abandoned technology, you know. And then it's like, is that from the aliens or was it set up, you know, to kind of break open the narrative a little more? So, yeah, I don't know. I guess yeah. we'll see. So you're telling me you also have a troubled mind, my friend. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, you know, my mind's going 24-7, even when I'm trying to sleep. Talk to myself, you know can't stop that thing too many questions too many yeah too many questions not enough answers and uh there's there's not enough truth telling it's, it's always smoke and mirrors carrot on the stick here carrot on the stick there you know like you really got to use your discernment in times like this and especially with a story like this you know amen to that you were a first-time caller cal i appreciate it, man thanks for listening thanks yeah. for giving us a call tonight Thanks for doing what you do, Mike. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Have a fantastic night. Simple as that. Dial the phone number 702-957-1037. Thank you for the call, my friend. This is the thing, right? At the end of this, I don't know. I don't know the answers. This is not the answer show. This is the question show. But it is suspicious, a lot of this. It's not just a little bit of this. A lot of this is suspicious. Sure, fine. You would expect, right, if a meteor comes flying anywhere close within like 10 million miles of Earth, the, the, the media is like freaking out. They're like, oh, MG, it's going to be doomed today. Maybe 10,000 years from now, right? It gets headlines. What is this? Why does this not get headlines? There's something to miss here. There's something wrong. I smell a rat and I don't know where. Anyway, we're going to continue. If you're listening on uh, the Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Roop Light in the Void. If you're listening anywhere else, the podcast feed, Facebook, DLive, YouTube, or Periscope, stay tuned for a third hour of Troubled Minds. We're going to keep taking your calls and keep talking about this. Play some of this press conference straight from YouTube. What in the world is going on? What in the hell is happening? I don't know. You tell me. And at the end, you guys know the drill. God willing, well, the bad news is we're done for tonight on Fringe. The good news is, God willing, we'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific, and we'll be talking about more weird stuff. What that is, I don't know yet. Well, but, uh, yeah, so let's finish. Be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. All right, you guys know the drill. We are off the fringe, and we're going to keep on trucking here. Third hour. Uh, if nobody's interested, I'll just play some of this press conference, and I'll go uh, kick it, watch some Netflix on the couch. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, if you guys want to be part of the show, still taking your phone calls at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And uh, you can join the Discord and be on the show that way. So we have some of the press conference to play from Anjali, which uh, is not really appropriate for the radio because, well, you know, uh, you know video is not the best and the audio quality is kind of crappy and there's planes flying by and it's a little bit weird and all the rest of that so anyway we'll do that when we get back but rather hear from you what do you think about this is it suspicious do you also smell a rat what's going on here i don't like to call people liars but i'll go ahead and put out on a put go on a limb and call the media liars because well that's what they do so anyway 
two minute break we're going to take a couple minutes and go come back for a third hour of troubled minds it just so happens that that Anjali press conference is almost an hour exactly so if nobody calls I'll just hit play go watch the Netflix there you go there's my extortion attempt nobody's interested well what can I do two minute break more troubled minds after the break be right back don't go anywhere All right, welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and uh, we're taking your phone calls tonight. We're talking about, what do, you, what do you know? We're talking about aliens. We're talking about conspiracy. We're talking about a press conference that happened in front of the Lincoln Monument today, and we'll play some of that because, well, it doesn't seem like people are interested. Uh, we got a few calls. Uh, thank you for the few calls that we did have. Well, and I'll just uh, cry myself to sleep because, well, our, I'm, our, our reach must be dropping. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not sure what else to do, guys. Uh, what else do I got to do to get calls? I hate to uh, I hate to just run you off and like end the stream and be like, well, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, that seems seems super rude, but what can you do, right? And if it seems like nobody's out there listening, well, that's what I can do. Let's go to Rohan. 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 What's up, buddy? You're on Troubled Minds. If you're there, this is the guy that was like, we like watching you sweat, Mike. He's like, we, we like you not getting phone calls because then you start to get squirmy and you start to get irritated and agitated. I said, Rohan, don't try me, man. I'll end it right at 9 o'clock. What's up, buddy? Are you there? Rohan in the caller queue. Unmute yourself and you're on Troubled Minds. Whenever you're ready, my friend. All right. So let's oh, go. I'm going to play. I'm here, bro. Sorry. Sorry That's about right. that. That's okay. The mute, the mute button. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, that mute button. That dirty mute button, man. Yeah, no, no. Welcome to the show, man. How are you doing tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not not doing too bad. I'm, I'm enjoying the show, so that, that's that's cool. I heard you. <laughs> Thank you. Are you calling me out? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, I did. He was uh, making fun of me earlier. He's like, "We like watching you squirm." No, no, no. I said, "Don't." If you do it too much, if you if you uh, give me that too much, I've got I've got the nuclear option. I can do it. I could just, That's it. Yeah, we've got the old mutually assured destruction option. Yeah, yes, we? sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I could just smash the, the the power button on the computer right now, and it would all disappear. And we'd be like, "What happened? Is he coming back?" Nope. Have, you, have you ever wondered <laughs> if any wars have ever been started like that, or I mean, it's been done where someone's just thought, "Should I just press it? See what happens." <laughs> press, press the red the button. button. <laughs> Let's press the button. <laughs> cleaner, yeah. cleaner start the Middle Eastern conflict. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm only half joking, so it's all good. I'm not gonna. I'm, we're not gonna go nuclear that way. But, but okay. So I don't know. I'm sure you've heard of this Anjali thing. What, yeah, what are your yeah. thoughts? What are your thoughts on this, man? Dude, well, do you know what? Well, well, I think that, that something similar happened before, but it was nowhere near as a bigger scale as this. But it, but there was loads of hype. Remember when it was on about Russian Area 51? After all them years of it just being sat there for ages, and then it gets made official. Oh, it, oh, it does exist, even though we've seen it. And then there was this big hype about going and trying to rush it. Do you know what I mean? And we probably weren't going to find anything anyway. But this is like a whole new thing, isn't it? You think people would be all over it, even even if it was just the woo-woo crowd or, like you say, the media whores. You know, while something's hot on trend there, they're usually all over it, aren't they? You know? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't remember the Russian Area 51. Did they ever... What, what came of that? Did it just... Well, no, not Russian. When there was not about rushing into it, there was not about trying to um, rush Area 51, trying to just... Loads of people gathered together. And I remember Heather Wade, she was having this campaign. Loads of people were going to gather together at Area 51, and they was all going to try and run in together, thinking then they couldn't be stopped in numbers. You know... Oh, the raid area fifty one. That whole bit. The raid it, yeah, yeah, yeah. The raid, yeah, yeah. So that got loads of hype. You'd think, wouldn't you? This would get like loads of attention, especially when you can talk about it now. UFOs. So it seems a bit weird if nobody's really turned up. It does seem odd. Uh, there you go. We got a volunteer. Ash will go with me if I get an invite. There you go. If I get an invite and I get a plus one, we'll bring Ash the reptilian. So at least we can spit acid on him and swing your tail and fight back. Yeah. All right, so or you so, can act as a negotiator, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> speak, speak, the, speak the language, the translator. <laughs> no, all right. So uh, you're right. Like, there's there's some weird stuff that uh, with this. Like I said, there's some there's some weird synchronicities with the way the press 
they kind of go in cycles. Like I said, if you watch extremely close, it seems like certain things seem to pop out when you, because I use the same search terms, right? Uh, like you, you can search UFO, you can search extraterrestrial, you can search alien. And then this is how you do it, guys. You search that in your whatever uh, search engine you're using, then hit the news tab and see what's in the news. And this is what I'm saying. This is how they manipulate information. And so depending on what's happening and how they want you to see it or not see it, uh, different things seem to appear in the top there. And I'm telling you, I don't think it's an accident. I don't think this stuff is an accident that we get to the point where we're like, okay, uh, this is happening, this press conference, she says she's going to take us there, et cetera, so on. But then in this very same day, you search for UFOs or aliens and you get these like kind of uh, articles shitting on the idea that aliens even exist. Right, it's almost like counter propaganda yeah. to counter the things she's saying. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's That's almost weird, like right? yeah, it's like in the Matrix. Almost like the 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 Oracle said something, so the architect's going to quickly write a program to offset it. You know, which is right. Is that the way this works? Except except the uh... I, 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 <laughs> yeah, well, you know, because you get they do there is all this programming though. I mean, I know it's like all rhetoric and cliche now, but I remember even when I was a kid, I used to notice even as like a seven, eight, nine year old, I used to think, "Hang on a minute, I just watched a cartoon, and the moral of the story was to not be too greedy." And then another cartoon, like later on, you know, like an hour later, comes on again, and the moral of the story at the end of that cartoon after twenty minutes is about not being too greedy. And I thought, well, that's weird. How come Thundercats and Jason the Wheel Warriors have got the same theme on today? Do you know what I mean? And Enforce Nintendo Squad also had that same theme today, first thing this morning. And you think, it's not a mistake, is it? They're lining up these ideas to push into your head you know, all the time. And like I say, it's all gone nuts. It's gone crazy. It's like it's all gone and turned into a... The media's had a chance to have a field day for so long. It's like they've become like crack addicts, aren't they? You know, and it's just become a runaway train. And it's like, like I say, it's just picking and choosing these stories. But I'm surprised at this one. So I thought there'd been a ridiculous amount of hype for this, but seems to be no takers. But if you can get the location, Mike, maybe you could go down there and rent a, rent a van out or something. Equipment. <laughs> have like our own our own alien con festival in the desert yeah yeah with a fundraiser yeah man <laughs> it's all burning man get, for, get, get your new piece <laughs> yeah but it, it does seem strange so even like like the thing is my point is they'll take they'll pick up you know even tabloids right like why why wasn't like the daily mail there you know what i mean like yeah you think yeah yeah, yeah. oh Right? You'd think they'd be all over it, wouldn't you? All the shameless <laughs> cash they could have made from clicks on that. They pick everything up, except, well, except for this. And that's what I mean. So is it really so far out there that, that well, it's off the beaten path, off the, reser- uh, off the, sorry, off the, uh, off the rails, that uh, we're, we're not, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, like, literally, like, if you look at some of the stuff the tabloids print, I mean, the National Enquirer, for crying out loud, printed that yeah. uh, George Bush was getting the vote of the aliens or some shit back in the day, and they had, like, him shaking the yeah. hand of, like, a gray alien on the damn cover of the, yeah. right? Where's the National Enquirer? Where's the Daily Mail? Yeah. Where are all these damn tabloids? Express. That's right. That's right. Okay. Come on, man. Yeah, something's, I mean, up. something's not I right remember, here. Exactly. There's some been terrible ones in Britain. It's almost countless. But I, I remember one, and it was a bit of a trick. It was a click. It was probably the first ever example of clickbait in like the late '80s, early '90s, where they did this big um, front page news about finding a London bus in the Antarctica, driven there by a, an alien. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, what? yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, it's just a, it's just, I think it's some it's a stunt, some art stunt or something. Do you know what I mean? But they'd sold it as this big alien story. It's just crazy. Yeah, especially I mean, like the the in the whole premise is too right. It's a show a show like this. You know, we get to say, oh, there's an alien base in Southern California. We're not saying it. She said it, right? I mean, that's the whole point of like like you know this clickbait journalism. I'm not saying we're doing that because we're not just like hyping that we're questioning what the hell's going on but it's like such an easy slam dunk for a tabloid to be like yep there's an alien base you know what i mean and again nobody's yeah. touching it nobody's I, touching it i don't know about you but it's just like a, a double it has a, like a backdraft effect on, on, on me because i open that hot door and because nothing happens i'm thinking as long as like it makes me it sucks me into it a bit more like i want to think well maybe she's got the goods 
<laughs> and everyone right. knows she's got the goods and they're like don't don't follow this let's hope she don't go or nobody notices do you know what i mean she does a live stream and actually does it goes to the base meets some aliens but only like 14 people have seen it on twitch <laughs> you know? well uh, uh how well come on rohan how would they handle something like that oh i don't know let's look at our facebook page it has forty two thousand followers and there's 13 people 13 people on Facebook watching right now, <laughs> out of 42,000 people that love the content on the page. And most of the content on the page now is just Troubled Mind stuff. So what's mm. up, right? You think they couldn't it, limit yeah. that information? The hell they couldn't. They would. So of it, course. It starts to make me of wonder. Course. It starts to make me curious. Like you said, something doesn't smell right. And I don't know if it's her story. I, that's the weird part here. I'm like, wait a minute mm. now. How come the tabloids aren't there? How come somebody didn't show up? How come something? I don't know. Yeah, she's getting traction on Twitter. Matt wants to know how many Twitter followers does she have? I don't know, like a, a thousand or a couple thousand or something. So it's like, it's pretty low. But I mean, you would expect that, you know, they pick these stories up. That's, you know, they have people scouring okay. news wires and Twitter and all kinds of shit. That's how they get the, yeah. weird, the weird stories, right? Or it could be on the other one, Mike, the other side where it's uh, they've got to, the tabloids are all holding back while somebody rewrites all of her history and puts her as a, a schizophrenic for the last 15 years and they've got to change all the records and that before they can talk about her. You know what I mean? Maybe she's for real, so they need to quickly uh, change all the all the background to this creditor. You know, maybe it's one of them, Mike. Yeah, well, right. If you can't if you can't control the narrative, then you squash it, right? Isn't that the way this goes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. right. Yeah. 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 Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Like that. Like I said, uh, the, the more I think about it, the more it makes me a little bit suspicious where not just some of these news cycle things that I plucked out today. Uh, but then again, right? Like, like I said, maybe you start to believe she has the goods. Maybe she's going to take you to see the eight foot tall lavender uh, mantis alien. <laughs> it's as ridiculous as that sounds. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's been crazy, wasn't it? Yes, might turn out Simon Parks has, has got the goods as well. Maybe over there, maybe they'll go together or something. You know, it would just be not. You don't know what's. It's, it's, I think it, it it leads me at least in my head to a, another point of like you you really 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 don't know what's real anymore these days, and I think that's all part of what's being done to us of all this like you know the global disruption. I think. Don't it seem like to you, Mike? The result of something is sometimes the reason for it, you know. And I think it's, it's just like a big whirl, a whirlwind of confusion for us at the minute. Ever since sort of the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, it's all been a bit, you know, the information wars kicked in, hasn't it? Yeah, well, and that's not just that. I think, uh, and the funny thing when you bring that up, it's uh, Alex Jones has been saying this for years. He calls his damn show Info Wars, right? Yeah. Uh, so I yeah, did, that's, I, it was it was off that where I had that insight. You know, when I was saying to you that time, we're in the Bronze Age. Bronze was the number one weapon of war and the best tech. And in the Iron, it was the Iron Age. You know, in the, in the Atomic Age, it was atomic weapons. And we're in the Information Age now. So that was obviously the number one weapon of war. You know. Yeah. Agreed. And so that's that, that's the age we live in, and that's one hundred percent sure. And so you would expect again, right? I don't know, but like that's that's even more suspicious, right? That they'll they'll pick up all kinds of goofy stuff and put it in. I mean, they did uh, Randy Kramer, Marines on Mars, for crying out loud! Like the tabloids picked that up, right? Saying that he was like uh, yeah. time travel, yeah, like that's... fighting fighting yeah. aliens on Mars, and you, you, there's breathable oxygen on Mars, and the tabloids picked that shit up, right? Well, I think there's some, yeah, and then, like I said, that will get hyped up to me and then make it look silly because it's still unbelievable, the, which discredits everything as a gestalt. But then other stories where they'll, they'll also get to the tabloids where they will say uh, NASA, have, NASA has detected an object coming into the Saturn system, meaning, meaning Saturn and all its moons, and they'll say, oh, uh, yeah, this object is 30 miles wide, and for, it, unusually it's uh, stopped above the rings of Saturn. And then, and then they'll say, oh, yeah, and it moved on about two and a half months later. So you're like, it's just a little side column, just a little story. They'll be in the tabloids, and you'll think it's a little space story. But, you, but the implications of that is like, hang on a minute, a 30-mile-wide object came into over Saturn, just sat there above the rings for nearly three months, and then carried on moving. So obviously it's intelligently controlled. Now, that was in the papers, but because there's no hype about it, nobody's highlighting it, 
Nobody's saying, hang on a minute, that must be intelligently controlled. But it's also 30 miles wide. So you don't make the connection, do you? That, oh, that, but that would be a gigantic vehicle. Do you know what I'm saying? So things like that do get slid into the papers. But if you don't know what you're looking at, you don't think anything of it, do you? you know? Well, because what you expect out of a tabloid, a story like that's going to be all bullshit, right? Like, like you're going to explain? Yeah, that's the other thing. Exactly. Exactly, Mike. That's the thing. Because then the source of it, because it's not been hyped, but it would be, the implications have been massive, but it's from a mainstream newspaper. You just don't really think, you just ignore it, don't you? Yeah. Like I said. But it got published. Yeah, it does. Think about this. Yesterday, we talked about time travelers from TikTok. Who picked that story up? Newsweek. Newsweek picked up the story about time travelers on Facebook fucking tiktok of all places are you shitting me newsweek so where the hell yeah, was newsweek for this where was newsweek for this yeah. well they didn't get a million yen for this <laughs> yeah i'm telling you man right like said, one of them you start well. to smell a rat Cha-ching. yeah it's it's uh, it's easy money it's easy clicks right it is easy clicks let me tell you one of our most popular shows uh, i i get the stats clearly Stephen greer and uh, Anjali, the alien base, the old one we did, right? Super, super interest in this. Like people in this community, in the ufology community, are interested in this. But are you shitting me? Not, not the tabloids. <laughs> They're inter- Newsweek is interested in time travelers on TikTok, but not an actual press conference on the steps of the. Uh, <laughs> Right there in front of old, old Abe sitting up, Abraham Lincoln, uh, his his uh, monument. And yeah, man, there's some, some, I smell a rat. I don't know what you it know is, what? but something's not right here. Something is not right. You know what? Come to think of it, you know, because there's all these like medical stuff for Big Pharma been mandated and it makes a ton of money, right? And if you've planned it in advance and, and you know, like I say, you're getting free marketing with all the media, there's probably a little, there's probably a little fund for the, for all the media to like only market certain stories to fit this big narrative, this big, you know, global agenda narrative. So they're probably just, they're probably on an incentive scheme. Do you know what I'm saying? All of them. They're probably on an incentive scheme to only like pick certain stories. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, like getting a bonus, you know, like uh, where you'll get um, employment services, they'll get people into work and the government will give them a little bit of money for getting them into work. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. they'll like abuse it and like say, I'll get, I'll get you this job for a couple of weeks and then a, uh, if you know, if, and then they'll get, and then the company will get paid a bit of money, and then they'll just like say, "We ain't got any work for you after a couple of weeks," and then you go back to the agency, and then they'll ask, they'll wait for a week, get you another job back at the same place. So they will get it starts as a new contract, so then they'll get a little cut of money. The agency will get a little cut of the money, and they're getting all this government cheese. Do you know what I'm saying? I bet there's something like that going on. You know, the little rackets you get. I bet yeah. all the media are getting a little slice of pie every time they hype a big story or do a distraction. Hell yeah. There, there's a literally a thing in. called information operations, and they spend all of their time, professionals, trying to wash out the news cycle when there are things they don't want people to see. That tells you a oh, lot. Oh, scrubbers. Almost Professional you know. scrubbers. Yeah. Yeah. It it exists, keep the uh, air clean. What's that? Uh, it's in the UK. It's called the Something Brigade. The seventy seventh brigade or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. You know what that is? Am I right? Am I right? Mm, Yeah. Yeah. We did a show on it a while. I can't. I don't remember if it was the seventy seventh, but there's there's an actual like that's that was the uh, uh, Penny told me about it. Penny told me about it, and I was like, really? So I look into it, and sure as shit, there's like an entire like a group of people to do nothing but try and control and command news cycles, and that's why like like I'm telling you guys, if you're interested. It doesn't take but a few minutes a day, but you have to do the same things every day, right? Like you have to find a particular set of search terms and you have to put them in these different engines and see what's coming up. Click the news tab, the news tab, right? And you'll see, you'll see how it gets ordered and uh, how sometimes things fall down and like the top story will be like, you know, 60 days ago. But when I did it today, there was shit from today. I was like, huh, that's really odd. (laughs) So here we are talking about it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Rohan, I, I gave you a bunch you of shit, but um, I didn't really mean it. I mean, I only half meant it. 
<laughs> yeah, you. yeah, you're buddies, aren't we? we? We like to have a bit of banter. Yeah, sir. But yeah, it's, it, it is. Uh, it's, it's, I suppose if you do that consistently, then Mark, that's the way to do because that's the way you're also going to spot. You know, we say we connect the dots by looking at this information. Well, when you if you're doing that activity every day, then you're going to spot little um, sub themes, aren't you? In the way that the, the the narratives are being pushed, I think that's that's the thing to be doing because there's so many layers of perception to see. You gotta keep, you gotta keep your head in a swivel, ain't you? That's what this show's about, man. That's uh, sometimes some of the things I'm talking about may seem kind of out of left field, but it's not. It's because I'm I'm literally looking for like an entire block of information and at how they change it based on what's happening in the real news, right? The the quote real news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. That's what I do anyway. Like the sneaky one, because they do little tricks, you know. They, oh, I I seen this happen live. The CDC, and I think it was 19th of July last year. They published this um, big document. It was about 38 pages. And there was this one little paragraph that was key. And it was basically saying they wanted to do this experiment, but they couldn't find enough, gather enough samples of COVID, COVID, you know, SARS, COVID-19. They couldn't get enough of it to be able to do this experiment they wanted to do. Right. And that was like, well, there's supposed to be this big pandemic all over the world. How come you can't find any to study? So, of course, people stop sharing it everywhere. And, a few, and about, you know, four or five days later, they changed it. But they changed it in a really sneaky way. They added a few extra pages to it. So you'd find the wrong page. If you look for page 38, it was been pushed down to like page 42. But they also changed the word in. So put it in past tense. Yep. Do you know what I'm saying? Which cha- which really changes it because because yep. July 19th, talking in the present, it's like, well, we've been doing this pandemic for months and, and you ain't even got any to study but if you put it in past tense, then people are going to read that and go, oh, yeah, it's just conspiracy theorists. That must have been way back at the beginning. The people are just going to assume that for normalcy bias when really the CDC admitted we haven't even got in it to study it. We haven't fucking got in it. <laughs> so, they changed it. You know, They're redacting yeah. history in real time right in front of us. It's disgusting. And that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why I watch the news cycles like I do. And that's why I watch for particular things. I have a set of uh, key search terms, which keeps me, as you know, that's the Night Stalker, right? He, he's a, he's that dude is on the ball too, and he he says Clyde Lewis is yeah. like ahead of everybody. Now Night Stalker's telling me, dude, you're ahead of Clyde Lewis. And I agree because a lot of things I talk about, Clyde talks about a week or 10 days later most times. I am on the tip of this shit because I'm watching every single day. But you see, I'm not watching everything. Yeah. I'm watching just a very specific set of search terms and how they're being manipulated through the news cycles. That is what catches my attention. Rohan, you're the best. Yeah. I got a call right behind you. You can hang on if you want. Yeah, cool. You can hang out. Or yeah, no, you can bounce mean, off. Um, it's up to you. It's up to you. No, I'll, I'll hang out. I'll just keep quiet. That's fine. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Let's go to Matt in California. Thank you, Rohan, for calling. Thanks, Matt, for calling. Welcome to the show. How are you today, my man? Good, how's it going, Mike? I'm doing well. Doing well. Thank you for being patient with I us. Thank you for waiting. Make, called, yeah, I called to make the show longer. <laughs> there you go. See, exactly. You, you, you heard my extortion attempt. Okay. Don't make me end this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead, man. What's on your mind? Okay. Uh, well, I'm on the same page as you, uh, how you feel about it. Um, you know, my, my inner Fox Mulder is like, let's go. Like, I'll pick you up on the way, man. And we go to this alien base. <laughs> But then, of course, you know, trust no one, and the conspiracy theory side of me is like, you know, no way. This is like too good to be true. I guess. Yep. Like I, you know, I'm on the fence about it. I want to believe. I want to believe it, but of course, you know, I'm doubtful of it. So how you said you were like curious and doubtful at the same time, and I think it's no coincidence that the news cycles are trying to like alter it. Like they're talking about a news article today saying you know, going backwards saying no. And then while they're trying at the same time, they're purposely trying to like push down her story or like disinformation, her, her story. Exactly. Right. Again, I smell a rat somewhere. And so I'll play some yeah. of the, I'll, I'll put it on the, on the screen here. We'll, we'll, we'll listen to her just speak for a little bit. Just so you guys can get a good gauge of like her demeanor, her, right? Like she doesn't seem super polished, like an intelligence professional to me. Lou Elizondo does, right? She doesn't. She seems like she seemed nervous in the press conference. She seemed like she was unsure of herself. She seemed right. Like 
You know, like she seemed like somebody who is not used to speaking in front of a crowd or the public. Me? Like I'm I'm a polished pro at this point. Like, you know, let's call me semi pro because I'm not good good, but I'm pretty good, right? Like I could go up and be like, Yeah, all right, let's start this and let's do this and you know, I for the most part I wouldn't get flustered and we could go from point A to point B to point C to point D because that's the way I do it here. I've got a shit ton of practice doing it. Watching her if she's fooling us, then she's had a shit ton more practice than me at faking it, you see? And I'm not so sure that's the case. I don't know. If she's fooling us like that, man, this is next level shit. And I don't know. I kind of doubt that. Or else the media would show up, right? If she was faking it, yeah. then they'd be there for us to buy the fake. You see? That's what has me suspicious here. Yeah, and, yeah, and like just speculation, like just throwing like a speculation theater, uh, you know, because I don't know, but let's just say, let's just say, what if she, what if she is right? What would that do? You know, she was talking about, in our language, our language is like broken because, and she was talking about tele, telecommunication, like through our minds talking, because, you know, you think about like the English language is horrible, but I'm trying to use words to describe and my feelings and my thoughts to you. And you're trying to like understand what I'm saying. But it's kind of it's hard. It gets altered, and even like now, now what about like in different cultures, like different languages? How, you know, they how they structure their sentences is completely different. So, like in America, I say, "Hi, my name is Matt," but in like Japan or somewhere else, they say, "Matt, my name is." So right, like right. Our, you know, language is so hard to communicate. So she, she was talking about we need to be able to communicate telepathically with each other, and then like you would know you would know everything about the person you're talking to like what their intent is their emotions and everything and we'd have to try to control that like get used to the fact that yeah people are gonna be able to read your thoughts <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and that's that's good or, bad, good or bad yeah is that good or bad exactly uh well you know it's <laughs> like like if you're you know you're you're not sick and, and i mean like you know uh, and, and i don't mean it like like you know like i'm demeaning mental health problems i mean if you're like literally have mental health problems like that's different right but you would expect that you know cutting through to the honesty of what people are thinking the world would be a much different place wouldn't it absolutely i mean and we can yeah, probably we, help we have to get people. used to it yeah you'd have to get used to it exactly but it would be a much different place like people couldn't hide like you know think about how it would change business entirely like you, you couldn't be like, oh, this is going to be a good deal for you, wink, wink, ha, 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 when it's not, because they'd be able to read your mind and be like, you lying POS, <laughs> come on, yeah, man. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know. And so, if it is, if it is real, and we do see, like, see this, you know, that again too, how would the world change? Just knowing, like, she said something about there's, uh, like, a galactic federation or something and there are seven races of aliens and some of them were for us and some of us were against us some of us were some of the aliens were like oh the humans like let's you know what are they doing over there they're looking down on earth like what are they doing you know they're destroying themselves over stupid things and now they're coming they maybe they want to come to stop us or you know put it into the human race because we're you know they think we're dumb and then it like out, we got outnumbered, right? It was like there was three alien, three races for us and four against us. Is that what it was? Yeah, that's what she said. There's Something three like friendly alien races that are trying to back up humans and say to the rest of the Galactic Federation, no, they're turning a corner. They're not going to be terrible like they have been for the last thousands of years. But there's four <laughs> factions that are against us is what she's saying. That's the communication that came from her. So, see, I know Matt listens, man. You were there for that whole show. You know exactly this whole damn story. You're on the ball, my friend. Yeah. Oh, and I have to say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know anything about it if it wasn't for you or the conference tonight because I saw you posted it, but I forgot. And it is interesting how I said, I, I appreciate it. Thank you for what you do, Mike, because I wouldn't have known about this if it wasn't for you. And it's, even if it is fake, even if it is fake, it's still a good story. That's for sure. Hell, That's for uh, sure. Because it's all, it's all about, you know, it's all about waking up humanity and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, I wouldn't have known about it for you. So, thank you, Mike. 
Uh, my pleasure. I'm glad you enjoy it. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you for the call. Anything else while we got you on? I'll play some of that press conference now. I, I was only saying that kind of tongue in cheek. Yeah. I, I have to. I have to go a little bit nuclear to get some phone calls sometimes, which shocks me because <laughs> I figured this this particular thing would get the phone ringing, but it hasn't. <laughs> what can you do? What can you do, man? But yeah, yeah. Anything else while we got you on? Um, no, thanks, Mike. Um, we'll listen to that and um, so I said, thank you for what you do. You're the best, Matt. Thank you for listening. Thanks for calling. Thanks for supporting the show. Good stuff, man. Look at that. Good people. Good people. Uh, uh, Rohan, anything on that before we play some of this press conference? I'm going to play some of this. Why the hell not? If you're still there. If not, that's okay. Let's. Uh, you go right ahead, Mike. You can play some. I'm eager to hear it. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Playing this. This is when the thing started, and I'm going to put it up on the screen here. And I'm I'm not going to do full full screen because I don't know about copyrights. This might be like an entire super psyop to like get people like me to play a full screen version of this that they're going to give us a YouTube hit, right? For copyright, I'm not going to do that. So that's why we have this split screen because they have me dancing around in the TV and then the background flowing and then like the chat and shit. It's really difficult for them to pick up just this little screen and ding us for a co- Yeah, I'm smarter than I look. All right, let's play some of this. This is exactly the moment when the press conference starts. Let's hear it. Oh, I muted it. I muted it. Let's unmute it. Here we go. Yes, this would be. Project down. Okay. Thank you all for coming here to this beautiful setting for one of the most amazing announcements I think the planet will hear. This is Anjali, who's had direct experience with these beings. They've come to her. They've directed her to be here. And she's going to deliver a statement from her experience and also see what else wants to be said today. So thanks so much for being here, Anjali. I'm Alan Steinfeld and Matt. And go ahead. It's Thank all you. yours. Thank you all yeah. for being here. We'll take questions after. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, many of you know me by Anjali because that's how I chose to come forward with the name of the higher beings that I am here to disclose to you about today have called me since I have become aware of their presence. See? Planes flying by and shit. It's, it's not ideal. Yet the nation's capital comes with its, uh, its sacrifices. So just so you guys know, what I was going to do initially for this show tonight is I was going to just trim up some of the things she said in this and then play you guys clips. But I was like, I don't know, because it's like the audio is so shitty. You got planes flying by. There's weird pauses. You'll see. So that's the reason I didn't, because the audio was kind of crappy. The message was sort of all over the place. But what I want you to watch is her demeanor. Do you think she's trying to deceive people? That's that's the important thing, right? So keep an eye. Watch her. And we're not body language experts or any of the rest of that, but just keep an eye on her. Watch her delivery. Again, is she somebody who's nervous or is she somebody who is trying to appear nervous? You follow me? Here we go. Thank you. My legal name is Angelia Lynn Schultz. That's A N G E L. I A Lynn is L Y N N last name Schultz S C H U L T Z. I was born on February 1st, 1972 in Fort Smith, Arkansas. On the way across the country with my very pregnant mother where we landed in Jacksonville, Florida, where I grew up. At that time my name was Angelia Johnston J O H-N-S-T-O-N. Okay, I'm going to kill it there. I'm going to skip ahead because she spends like 10 or 15 minutes literally going into exactly who she is. Like she's literally spelling out her full name. And notably, the thing I noticed right off, I was like, wait a minute. Her name is basically Anjali, right? That's her name. So she just adopted like a basically like, like that Sanskrit version of Angelia right? That's her damn name. So that part was suspicious initially because remember 
in Sanskrit, Anjali uh, translated to messenger, I believe. It was something like that. It was like, ah, this is too perfect, right? But then it turns out that's kind of actually almost her exact name. So you could see how she might adopt that as like a, a nickname pseudonym on the internet. So that was the first thing that stuck out to me about this. I was like, oh, shit, that's kind of her name, you know? So now that name itself, like Robert said earlier, right? He's all, Michael Strange, I trust you because your name's Michael, not UFO Jesus. <laughs> Just to throw a name out. Uh, UFO Jesus, what's up? I love you, brother. <laughs> but, but, right? Something like that. But it turns out her name is actually Angelia, and right? And right, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm gonna skip ahead here. Uh, but that's this starts at 10:06. I've I've linked it in the chat. I encourage you guys to watch this. And like I said, watch the body language. Watch the things she says. Here's the weird part too. I noticed she was in like this weird little throne, right? This weird little seat that seemed like a. It's got like things draped all over it. Some nice nice cloth, and I'm like, what the hell is this, right? Which I didn't realize until later is a wheelchair. So at the end of this, she's like in the sun and she's like, get me out of here. And they wheel her off in the wheelchair. So she's actually sitting in a wheelchair right now. It just looks like a bizarre little makeshift throne of sorts, right? So anyway, let's, uh, let's just skip ahead and let's just go randomly right here and see what she's saying. Or I wasn't. And the only way I was going to know is if I went. And so in an olive branch of trust, they provided me with their names, their address, and their phone number. I verified, I texted them, made sure their phones, we were connected, it was real. So I sent it off to a couple of friends, including my daughter, let her know exactly where I was going, and with whom, and why. All right, so this is the st- uh, we'll we'll pick up the story where she's starting here. So she met with these people. She was sitting in a coffee shop in Southern California. She had met telepathically with these aliens while she was in the hospital. She has some condition. She doesn't know what it is still. She's in the she's in a wheelchair now, which suggests things have changed since 2018, which is when this story actually went down. 2018, she's sitting in Southern California in a coffee shop. She meets people that like the spontaneous conversation comes up that they know where the alien base is. All right. And she's like, what the hell? Like, how did this, like we met in a coffee shop and 10 minutes later, we're talking about alien bases. And this woman Anjali, as it were, was communicating telepathically with these same aliens from said base. So it's like the meeting in the coffee shop was not an accident. It's like those people were sent to meet her even subconsciously or unconsciously so they showed up they met and now that's the encounter she's talking about she met these nice people that literally knew where this alien base was and they were going to take her so let's pick up the story here where in her own words she was concerned so by a man who, yes, knows how to do it and laughs wholeheartedly at the idea that it can't be done. It's quite, quite amusing. I entered the tunnel with four people, Wayne and Trisha and another couple whom they're no longer in contact with. few minutes of walking into this nicely, nicely excavated tunnel. I just have to say that. There was a light ahead of us and we began walking a little bit quicker. And when we rounded the corner, different races 
of beings. There we go. Two different races of alien entities, beings. All right. This is it, right? This is what I'm saying. In her own words. Now, look, Jack says this is so BS, but this is what I'm saying to you. This is what I'm saying, and this is the bizarre part. How come the tabloids and Gaia TV and all kinds of shit, all the woo-woo peddlers out there, you know who they are, right? I'm not going to call everybody out, but all of those MFers, they ran with the Marines on Mars story with that guy, Randy Kramer. If you don't know who I'm talking about, we did a show on it way back, super clickbaity, and guess what? It's probably a bunch of bullshit. They ran with that. So explain to me why the, the media is not picking this up. That's the suspicious part to me, all right? It seems like there's a concerted effort to shut this up because, again, think about it. If it wasn't for me, you guys out there, would you know about this story at all? That doesn't mean I'm magical or anything. It just means that, hey, it's not being pushed into the mainstream media. Is it too woo-woo? Maybe. Maybe. However, what about Randy Kramer and Marines on Mars, for crying out loud, fighting a battle against five different alien races, time travel, all kinds of shit. That guy's story went clickbait crazy. Explain to me the difference. How is Randy Kramer, Marines on Mars, believable enough for tabloids, and this is not? You see what I'm saying? This is what makes me highly suspicious and makes my spider sense tingle. I don't know. Is she lying? I don't know. Is she just very good at playing the, right, the tentative host? Does she really have health problems? I don't know, right? That's part of this. That's part of being a discerning mind. You have to, to, you have to consider all those things. But again, why is Randy Kramer, Marines on Mars, not, a, not or good enough? That is good enough for tabloids, and this is not. This is clickbait like crazy. You think there's not tens of millions of dollars to be made by all the media conglomerates around the world with this story. They don't even have to say it. She's saying it. Something's up. I'm telling you, something is up here. I, I don't know what it is, but I smell a rat. Let's, let's listen. So she goes into the base and she sees two different alien beings, different races. Let's pick it up for her words. That were standing there. There was a gray, um, I do not believe that he is organic in the way that we understand. Also, not a drone in the way that we understand. but a body that holds a consciousness that interacts. There were also several other beings that were what we typically, now I understand, call in this community, the phenomena community. They were all well over six approaching probably six and a half, maybe a little bit taller. Very tall. They would stand out in this crowd. We would all notice. They had fine white hair. All right, fine white hair. She describes a gray alien. Look, this is where she describes the mantis, the lavender mantis, eight feet tall. Hold on. I said it. She's going to say it too. I didn't say it. She said it. You see? Hold on. Now, what's going on here? <laughs> you, guys, you guys are hilarious in the chat. All right, here we go. So, here, listen, in her own words. But listen, hold on. Even if you don't believe her, my point is this. Why on God's green earth haven't the media just swooped this up for the tens of millions of dollars of clickbait value it's worth? Because it is. Like I said, if you think they're not suppressing certain information, go look at our Little Green Men YouTube page. There's 42,000 fucking followers on that page. There's 10 people watching right now. How does that work? Suppression. Information suppression. I'm not even dangerous for crying out loud. However, 
it tells you everything you need to know that our reality is being manipulated. And the thing that makes me suspicious about this moment today, this press conference is that they're not jumping all over it for the money value. Is it because the Afghanistan thing has washed it out? That could very well be. Okay, maybe all hands are on deck for Afghanistan to milk that money, that media. If it bleeds, it leads money, and they'll come back to this. Maybe, all right? But I don't know. I don't know. But here we go. Fine white hair. She describes a gray alien that is not synthetic, not a cyborg, but also not organic as we know it. And then she continues. Here we go. This is where she talks about the mantis alien. Warm, not cool colored, a warmish white. But their skin, they're radiant. They have, it's nearly alabaster. But I don't mean to imply cold or hard. Just beautiful and stunning. And makes you want to run your hand across it. After saying hello to me, and at the time, nearly feigning surprise. Oh, hello, Anjali, they said. We've been waiting to talk to you. They wanted me to accompany them deeper into their base. And I want to make something very clear that from where this excavated tunnel is, which is mostly rock, okay? People who live in the Mojave Desert, they understand what I'm talking about and they know. Um, it's pretty stable. Where it ended and where their space began was seamless. There was nothing there. It just suddenly was, okay? This wasn't like there was a physical edge that I could delineate. <clears throat> they took me into a room where I met several of the most amazing beings that are here. <clears throat> One was in a body approaching eight foot tall taller than the door that was like a like a sliding hatch door I looked up onto the into the into the room on the other side of the door to meet the face of a being that had been giving me visits and I thought at the time that this being was probably about four feet tall such is the nature of this phenomena. This being in physical, in physical form has chosen an eight foot tall form with lavender skin that looks like a very beautiful praying mantis. A mantis. There it is. Lavender skin, eight foot tall, a praying mantis, a very beautiful praying mantis. What's going on? What's happening here? Think, think, think. What's happening here? Is she delusional? Is this a psyop? What's happening here? Did she really see these things? Why are the media not all over this? Tabloids at least. Newsweek yesterday, yesterday talked about 
TikTok time travelers for crying the fuck out loud. Where's Newsweek today? I'm just telling you. I'm not saying she's telling the truth, right? Maybe she's telling her truth, right? As she understands it. What I'm saying is there's something suspicious here, and I don't know what it is. Think, what's going on here? Like I said, I don't like directly calling people liars because we all have our own human condition to deal with. I don't like to do that. It's not fair. We don't know what's going on with this woman. All right? And so that's part of the suspicion here. I don't know. Eight foot tall, lavender, beautiful, perfect mantis. Straight out of her mouth. I'm going to play a little bit more. We're not going to play the rest of this. You got the whole video. I've linked it. I'll link it again, and you guys can check it out. But right, there's something amiss here. There's something off. And it's possible, it's very possible, that the Afghanistan stuff, because it's so political, because you can shit on Joe Biden like crazy right now, that, or you have to back up, buck up to defend him, right? It's like the, it's like the big wars going on between the political media, that they're like, okay, we're going to, like normally in like easy days, we would jump all over this because it would make you not aware of what kind of you know nefarious bill they're trying to pass in Congress. But right now, this is second fiddle because they have to step up and fight and battle and try and defend right the lefty-righty paradigm. So I don't know. Like I'm saying, something suspicious here. And that could be it. I may have answered my own question. Here's another good one, too. There's some good stuff. Sherry and Robert are all over this in the chat over in uh, What's Up Joe, too. Uh, Robert says this on Facebook. What's up, Robert? Says, ask yourself, Mike, why your viewers tonight don't appear particularly interested in this? Is it because we are simply not impressed by her claims and intuitively recognize the scam in the making? Yeah, right? Maybe. Maybe. And I'm okay with that. Like I said, every show is not going to be a home run. But like I tell you, my spider sense tingles about this for a number of reasons, and I've already told you lots. Uh, let's see. Joe says, eight foot tall. He must need some big shoes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Sherry doesn't believe it, says lie, lie, lie. Uh, Robert says, "Why? Uh, who would look upon an eight foot mantis and find it beautiful instead of running like hell? Amen to that, brother. <laughs> Amen to that. And Sherry says, purple people eater. Yeah, there we go. I don't know. What's up, Jennifer? Thanks for showing up. Says, like, if she's telling the truth, why did she see them? And if she's lying, why make this up? That's what I'm saying. Does it not make you wonder what in the world is going on here? And so she had some sort of condition. She was in the hospital for some amount of time. And that's when she actually made contact, telepathic contact initially with this eight foot tall lavender mantis alien. Do you hear the things I'm saying to you people? Well, why don't you just hear from her? question and it's good to revisit once in a while jennifer asks i missed everything what does she want now this is the this is the the most insane part she says that she did meet these aliens in a base in the mojave desert in southern california here's what she wants she's not selling a book she had written an ebook previously before she came out and described this situation but here's the crazy part she made that ebook free now because she doesn't want, to, she, she said, I don't want your money. I want disclosure. And they are here, and this is what's happening. And this is what's going to go on. She says, in the coming weeks, she's putting together or has already put together a team, has clearance, telepathic clearance from these aliens to go to an alien base in the Mojave Desert with a camera crew and get all the scientific data they need to prove they're here. 
That's what she wants. So again, uh, Matt earlier asked, uh, how many Twitter followers does she have? I checked. She's got just less than 3,000, which isn't super impressive. She's not going to make a living on that or something, right? That's, that's kind of nothing, right, in the grand scheme of things. Like there's, you know, assholes of the world. Like how many do you think Sean Hannity or Don Lemon has? Asshole, asshole. They got millions of followers. You see? So I don't know. Again, I'm suspicious. But that's what she wants. She says she's going to take a camera crew into the Mojave Desert, into the alien base. Sorry, Rohan. I see you're unmuted. Go ahead, buddy. What do you got to add, man? You've heard some of this now. Oh, no. You, now you, you was on a roll there. <laughs> Didn't stop my. I'm always on a roll, bro. I'm always on a roll. It's just a, a slower or a faster roll. But I don't know. What do you think? What's your, what's your take on this now that you've heard some of the things she's saying? Well, it's interesting. I can't believe it. I didn't know this story because I didn't really look things up. I'm still on the break, like, so thanks for bringing it to me. But I'm, I'm even more interested now because uh, the guy that brought her out, Alan Steinfield, me and Joe interviewed him uh, a couple of weeks ago. So that was, that was a funny synchronicity. But we've, I found him to be really intelligent, the guy that introduced that lady. I mean, I don't know who this lady is. But, but yeah, the guy that inter- introduced her, uh, we interviewed him about this book he brought out about a month ago, and um, yeah, I found his comment. It was it was trying to be it was like us trying to really just research this stuff. Except you know he, he, he was doing it for experiences, and he had this book. He had um, all these contributions that he'd put together. He tried to make a book where he pulled together everybody's research in terms of contact experiences. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know if this has just fell into his lap because he's very experienced. But in his book, I've I got the list here of the people that contributed. There was a, like Whitley Strieber, uh, Linda Howe, John Mack, uh, Daryl Anker, Nick Pope, uh, Grant Cameron, Mary Rodwell. You know, and it's, I think they're on a bit of a mission to try and pull it all together and, and do this disclosure thing in terms of through the, the contact experience people. So... It's interesting for me now because I've interviewed that guy and I, I was impressed with it, to be honest. So it's like, uh, yeah. yeah, it's like it's too good to be true, isn't it? Do you it's, know what I'm saying? It's, it's, so it's, it's like, it's, it's uh, not too good to be true. Now, here, here's why. I, OK, so if you guys are like, Michael Strange, what's your deal? Why are we even talking about this? I get it. But let me tell you why I'm intrigued and why I think it's worth dis- discussing, considering and talking about. Because like like Rohan just said, what what'd you say? Whitley Strieber, Linda Moulton Howe, right? Yeah. Like you, th- Richard Dolan, you start throwing out. It's the same damn crew for 30 yeah. freaking years. If, if we were going to yeah. get disclosure from that group, we'd have had it. And we're not going to have it from those people. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, well, they say they have inside sources and they've, they've given us fake information. Now, look, yeah, and you, could even, you could even, like, 20 years from now, you could say, look, Michael Strange was peddling the story about Anjali on Guy, and she was saying she was... I'm not telling you this is true. I'm saying there's some specific things about this that are interesting for particular reasons, and I'm pointing out those reasons. Again, the lack of press coverage... Two, how come it's not picked up by Richard Dolan and guys like that? Three, how come nobody's heard about this? Literally, this is, li- this is literally the single thing that people have been waiting for, for like an alien disclosure forever, <laughs> right? Yeah. I know where an alien base is. There's multiple races, and I'm going to take you there next week. If the- Look, the time's ticking. The clock is ticking. Yeah. If if yeah. you don't jump on this now and it turns out to be a nothing burger, you missed three weeks of clickbait. Where's the media? I'm telling you, something is not right with this. Yeah, and what a massive Mars. claim to make as well if it won true. What a gigantic claim if it's if if you know it's not true. It just seems a bit like so maybe it's all gonna be a big setup there, maybe it's a big honeypot. And we're gonna get presented with something that's all controlled, you know, big controlled narrative. And we'll think, oh my god, we've got the goods, look, it's an alien base, mantids. And it turns out there's just some I don't know, some super soldier that we've made hybrids. I'm just saying, I don't know the answer to these things. I'm just saying that like there's a reason why it's kind of like tickling my brain and I can't quite place it. <laughs> I don't know. There's something again, right? Cause you have to, you have to take all the things into account, the media, how they kind of treat this or don't treat it. Right. Like again, how come again, once again, 40,000 followers on Facebook and we have less than 20 people here these days. 
We used to get 50 or more back in the day, right? Just on Facebook, uh, concurrent for the entire show. And it's been, it's yeah, been, it, it, so what are you telling me? Is my show getting worse? Or? No, you'd think it'd be increasing, wouldn't you? It's, like it's being cut. It's being filtered more. Yes. Not only that. <laughs> Perhaps. The, yes. Not only that. Not only that. Not only that. The, uh, the number of followers is going up. So we get followers each week, plus followers, but not people watching the show. Anyway, point being is they definitely can, uh, can right? Uh, here we go. Like, uh, there you go. I want my Heaven's Gate Troubled Minds Nikes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, but this is what I'm saying to you. Like, like some people have made the joke, this is how you build a cult, right? With, with this. You, the aliens, right? So again, it's a ticking time bomb. Three weeks, from, two to three weeks from now, they're going to be out there with a the camera crew, right? So do you think this will literally just vanish? Let's say they find nothing, all right? Do you think it'll go away like, okay, well, you know, like this will be, be scrubbed from YouTube and you won't even be able to find this anymore? Or this is the, now this is the interesting part. Her original Reddit thread, where we got the information from that led me onto this track is deleted. Uh, which is why I always say doing a show like this and talking about things like we do is an archive <laughs> of things. It's an archive. Yeah. We read that yeah. entire thread. So now you can't find it. It's gone. It's been deleted. Uh, but if you go listen to our know. show, we went, Ash and I went through the entire story. You see what I'm saying? There's value Analog. in this. UFO Joe does yeah, the same thing. Nice. You 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 uh, transcribe shit and you put it up on your website, and then they can't fucking change it. They can't fucking delete it, right? Because you yeah. are in charge of that information now. If they take it you down, describe it yourself. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know what happened on the the web archive for the Wayback Machine? And for the first time, it couldn't show me an image of something, and I thought, <gasps> dun dun dun. Do you know what I mean? Two two images, and it couldn't show me. And I thought it's never ever failed the the Wayback Machine, the Internet Web Archive. I've always been able to find it from the URL. It's always always a picture yeah. of everything that goes up in there. But the, for the first time, I couldn't find one. It wasn't there. It showed me a blank image, and I thought, uh oh, <laughs> gotta yeah. save everything. Exactly. Except it's not. Except it's not. Now, check this out. Now, this is funny because Robert's, Robert's my boy. And, he, you know, like I said, if I know you and you call in a lot and you like make the joke, I'll get the joke. If you don't call in a lot and then you start like piping off in the chat, I'll think you're an asshole troll. Robert says this. Hey, Mike, nobody can hit it out of the ballpark every time. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. I've made that joke myself about my own show. You can't. Every show can't be top, top, right? But I'm telling you, the reason I'm talking about this is because there are sus sus suspicious circumstances surrounding it. So anyway, let, let's just hear a little bit more from Anjali. We're going to go a little bit long because we started a little bit late to accommodate Alex Exum's show, et cetera, so on. So I know it's a little less than three hours, so we're going to go a little more. And uh, again, if you guys are interested, we're still taking your phone calls, by the way. We're here with Rohan. Thanks, Rohan, for jumping in. See, even though Rohan's shitting on me earlier, he's like, we love watching you square, Mike. The, the more agitated you get with no calls, the more we don't want to call. Well, here's Rohan. Here's James. Here's, uh, here's Cal. Here's, here's Billy. We, we got lots of calls. So I, I thank you again. But look, we're still taking your calls if you want to discuss this. What do you think about Anjali? Again, now her name, that, that moniker is basically her name. She's like Angelina. You do see what I'm saying? It's not as suspicious as it looks, right? So I don't know. That's a little bit more of this. Anything, Rohan, before I play a little bit more of this? No, you go ahead, man. Action. Here we go. Anjali on Gaia. Today, this is today, this morning, this morning, on the steps, just in front of the Lincoln Memorial action. Oh, as she takes a drink of water. I'll, uh, Thank I'll, you for your patience. I'll fill the dead air. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, Billy. They deleted the thread. I'll, I'll link the episode. I'll find it. Hold on. I got you. Here's her Twitter, by the way. Put it in the chat. There was a table that came up out of the floor and I laid on it. And they removed my consciousness from this body. And it was beneath me. I had no feeling. And they, there was a mist that I can only describe as light. Every 
everyone knows what misty uh, a misty morning looks like. Imagine if that mist, if every little every little dot of water was a little fragment of light, and that's what I was experiencing. And it was absolutely pure, astonishing love. And the entire time they're saying, wake up, wake up. Remember what you're supposed to be doing. Remember who you are. Remember why you're here. And prepare to transcend. They explained to me about something that took me a very long time to remember the word. I wasn't even sure until I went underwent hypno regression. I had to be certain. They explained something about the evolution and growth of consciousness through learning. And they used a word called density, but I didn't I didn't understand that. Anybody watch, uh, I, I, when I watched this earlier, I was like, oh, God. Anybody watch uh, Back to the Future? Remember? He had the, the notebook. He's all, I am your density. <laughs> I almost fell out of my chair. I almost fell out of my damn chair. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, what the fuck? Here we go. <laughs> but the, she continues. <laughs> you, you, you've seen that, right? You've seen that, Rohan? <laughs> you are my density. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's hear what she says. What's up, Kelly? I see there. We'll get to you in a sec. Let, let's uh, play a little bit more of this. You are my density. <laughs> Action. They were trying to wake me up. They were saying to me, the veil is very heavy. Wake up. Remember what you agreed to do. <clears throat> After some time, They escorted me back to the opening of the tunnel where the tunnel met their base. And Wayne stepped forward into the space that I was in. And immediately we were standing in his home. I grabbed my head and screamed some expletives like I can never repeat on air. I can. She can imagine. And their friends and his his wife, they just said, oh, you're back. That's what's going on. We are back under this archway that divides one side of his house from the other. And he had told me that when he was done visiting them, that they would always put him back there. And this was before we went into the tunnel. And I thought, well, this is either going to be the greatest day of my life or I'm going to be killed, but, you know, at least they'll know who did it. I was shooting for greatest day. Everything about them spoke to their authenticity. All right, let's kill this. Uh, this goes on for a full hour. Like I said, I'll, I'll have, the link is already down below if you guys want to check it out. Uh, the original show, we did a whole show on this. If you can, if you're going to go back and listen to it, please listen to it on the podcast feed because it k- kicks us a few pennies. If you listen to it on YouTube, we don't get paid jack shit. So I appreciate it. If you do, go back and listen to it on the podcast feed. It gives us a few cents. Thank you for uh, supporting the show and appreciating the work we do here. Uh, okay, there you go. What's up, Billy? says, next time I call, I'm going to be on Red Bull because I can clearly see something weird going on here and I have some theories. Yeah, there you go. All right, so I'm linking the show if you guys want to check it out. I'm putting it in all the chats. There you go. And uh, you can uh, please, uh, if you want to li- go back and revisit the story. I understand. Like, I'm with you. I'm with you on all the skepticism and all, all the weird stuff, right? I'm with you on all the weird stuff, right? But the thing is this. There's some other weird stuff. Yeah, that's a good question. I'll try and reach out to her, see if I could get her on the show. That would be amazing. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I get you, Sherry and Robert. I'm with you. All the things you're saying are making my spider sense tingle. 
I get it. I understand all the things you're saying, right? But, okay, so we're going to go a little bit long because, well, that's the type of show it is tonight. Uh, you guys you guys always backload the calls. Uh, there you go. There you go. So uh, James has it right. The uh, Yes, Mike, you were quite sk- skilled at using choice words. You're fucking right I am. Kelly, are you there, buddy? <laughs> Kelly, are you there, buddy? Uh, if you're there. Rohan, any comments on any of the rest of that before we get to Kelly? Kelly's in the thing. He is, is not unmuted yet, but... We're still taking, your, still taking your phone calls, guys. If you're interested in this and you have some takes on this, we will take your call. As you know, nobody tells us when to stop, and we'll continue. Like I said, we start a little bit late, so we'll go a little bit late, and it's okay. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link. Kelly, what's up, my man? How you doing tonight? Good. How you guys doing? Oh, pretty good. Uh, I heard you were traveling. Sherry told on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went up to Alaska. You know, my niece was getting married, so. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Welcome back. About. So it was pretty fun. Fantastic. I got worried. I was like, damn, it's been several shows and Kelly hasn't called in. What are we going to do? Sherry's like, oh, he's <laughs> traveling. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. He's, he's okay. He's okay. But what do you think? Yeah, think You've heard some of this. Fun. What do you think about this, uh, this, this, uh, the claims being made by this young lady? Pretty interesting. Um, it's the first time, like I said, I haven't really heard anything about this, you know, because like, again, I was, busy traveling and stuff doing some uh, family stuff but um i've just been listening to the last part really kind of interesting that she's saying these things are eight foot tall purple mantis aliens yes that's one of them the other one's like a smaller gray with like spindly white hair not human but not robotic as we know it so that that was her description of the two races yes you're spot on yeah i mean on uh on uh, the show chat, I kind of posted some. Um, these are from um, ancient walls in like uh, the Hopi. So you've also heard like other stories. I'm pretty sure that you know if anybody's into this stuff uh, has seen or or uh, heard about other cultures talking about these. Not only she's not the only one. Uh, this mantis uh, beings have been talked about throughout history. And again, I. I posted some pictures on there with some cane drawings of what these things might be look like as, you know, as kind of what they were would draw. And, uh, I have a few more, but, uh, yeah, it's interesting that she's talking about these mantis, you know, that these things popped up again, you know, and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, in the circles going around, <clears throat> but I've never heard him call them, you know, seen them purple or anything like that, but I haven't really, no one could really say by the drawings of what they, you know, what color they're looking like. But yeah, or or you know what? And another thing, kind of like it, it would be a little bit like would be like the Hopi Indians would, you know, they were saying they were more like the ant people, you know. So it could be either you know one of the same or you know two different ones. But yeah, I just find it pretty interesting that uh, she's coming out with that. I didn't hear the the second bean she was trying to describe though. Excuse me. Yeah, just like I said, it, like a kind of a standard gray. She described as having hair, though, like white spindly, white spindly hair and not being robotic or organic. It was somewhere in between. So, but again, right, so that seems to be from the mythologies, right, from, from ufology, from, right, the, the, like people have described that. We've discussed that in the past, that the, the gray aliens are not really, they're sort of drones, more like robotic uh, you know, things that, uh, you know, that they, they're said to abduct people and carry out the uh, whatever experimentation is going on. So who knows? Like I said, I don't even know if any of that's true. But so she's describing those entities as they are. And then this other mantis one. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, there's a lot here that's kind of a little bit off the rails, of course. But like I said, if the media picks up Marines on Mars in time travel, you know, time travel TikTok yesterday. Why are the tabloids not all over this? Is it is it so far off the reservation than than time travels? I said it again. I'm sorry. So far off the rails from time travels. I mean, I, I just don't understand. I don't get it. Right? There's there's something suspicious with sim- this. I think it could be as simple as bad timing because there's all this stuff in Afghanistan and there's wildfires in Canada. And you think it's just if there'd have been nothing going on this week, then there'd have been all on top of it. Do you think it could be that? I think so. Simple. Yeah, I think it's. A, I think that's the simple explanation. We'll know if, when this kind of crisis abates, that they'll jump on this. So we'll see. But like yeah, I said, yeah, it's yeah, also maybe in a week. Yeah. The time is only so much because once they show up to the mountain pass and there's nothing there, 
I'm, you know, I'm, I'm telling the future. I'm Mike Stradamus now. If they show up to the Mountain Pass and there's nothing there, they, the window for this clickbait juice is gone. You see? So they, they can't let this dawdle too long unless they've got a bigger fish to fry. So you may be right. Oh, maybe it's a double bluff. Maybe, maybe it's, a, it's a big punk the media campaign. And they're going to come in last minute. They've done it now while there's something else going on. So they'll, <laughs> they'll react late and then they'll go and everyone will be like, ah, you fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> It's raining today. We're going to have to postpone two or three more weeks out. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, Kelly, what you're talking about is the Space Brothers, right? That's what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah well, there's some of them too. Like uh, there's other one, I think in uh, there's a Mayan tradition. They were believed that it was like an ant people or, uh, or somewhat of a uh, prime manis. But what their, their uh, belief was is like, you know, there was drawings of it. I think it's either Mayan or Aztec, but <clears throat> they say that they all they can all we all come from a cave, and they have a drawing of it, and they have like you know all I guess it was like I don't know if it was all cultures, but it had like um, I don't know there was a there was a, it's like a it's a big room and it shows like you know different people in each different room, and that we came from. Like the Mother Earth, like we came from the cave, and uh, like there, I think I don't know if it was there. It wasn't a god, more or less, but more you know that these people showed them the way coming out out of the out of the cave into the planet. Yeah, but uh, it's I don't know, man. It's 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 interesting that you know that I mean it's not like you know the mantis thing was is uh, you know news, you know like new news or anything. I mean, she could be taking this from, you know, some some older things. I don't know the background on this lady, you know, of course. I don't know if they talked about it, you know, at the beginning of the video or not. But I don't know, man. Uh, it could be anything, you know. It could be what, uh, what caught me was how she sits there, you know. She's kind of a lot of twiddling her hands, you know what I mean. I kind of, like, try to read people's body because it tells me a lot. But again, I didn't really watch the whole video when it first starts. But uh, she's very articulate, you know. She's, she, you know, she uses her words very good. But I don't know, man. We'll have to, we'd have to sit and see, you know. What I mean, kind of find out what's going on. I'm waiting. I'm hoping. I'm hoping I'm wrong. My prediction is Mike Stradamus hat putting it on. I think they're going to show up, and there's going to be nothing there. But if I'm wrong. It's the wrong of the century, and I'm excited. I'm excited to be wrong this time. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You can't afford not to be there, can you? Yeah, I, I want to be there. I want to be there. So, actually, George, now this is crazy. George Knapp, if you guys know George Knapp, the, the guy who broke the Bob Lazar story back in 1989, I don't know him. I do live in the same town he does. He tweeted her, Anjali, about going, and she few days later tweeted him back and said nice that you contacted me and i didn't have to contact you me and uh actually the other guy uh what's his name um armando who was on the show a while back you guys you guys know he was here talk he's from ufo twitter as well now we we kind of got in there and trying to edge our way in with george knapp like hey hey if you got if you got some cool guys that want to go <laughs> i live right here i'll go right so we'll see we'll see what's going to happen here but if it literally if out of some random bizarreness i get an invite you guys better freaking believe i'm going i'm going to go check this shit out firsthand and see what the hell happens and if we get devoured by some mantis aliens well you know what happened to me <laughs> you know what happened to me <laughs> oh shit yeah i don't know what is this uh, next couple three weeks. Make sure you live stream it, Mike. Yeah, right. Exactly. When you're getting eaten. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you want to see? <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's coming. And that's my point, Kelly. Is that it's coming, and so there's only so much time they can monetize this, right? Because if they don't come up with the goods when they say they're going to, and it's soon, she set a time and a date for a press conference, and she showed up and did it. Now she said, we don't have the exact date yet when they're going, but she said in the next two, three weeks, she's got a camera crew hired and they're going to go there to this alien base. So if this lapses next month, this story is no good, you see? So that's my point about why the media can't dawdle on this. And it's curious to me that they are. Just a lot of weirdness here, a lot of weirdness here. Well, 
uh, who's talking about the, the guy they introduced her? Uh, they were saying that in the chat, but I'm not, I, I don't know. I think he was just a, uh, she, so, uh, she had a, she, I don't think she hired these guys that did the video. I think it was like a production company that volunteered. And so I think he was there as just part of that crew. I don't think he was like CIA or anything, but who knows? What the hell do I know? Like that was some of the speculation, right? I think he was just, oh, there I was for saying like, that I was six, saying it, we interviewed him recent. Maybe he was talking about that. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you mean, Kelly? Well, I don't know. I think it was him talking about um, the lady who introduced him or introduced her or something. I don't know. Maybe it was a different story, but like, I guess he's got credentials. Yeah, that's why. That's exactly what I was saying. Sort of, we'd interviewed him, and I thought he was quite intelligent, and it was like he was really making an effort to try and study this stuff. Do you know what I mean? He had a lot of interesting things to say about how it works as well. So, yeah, I thought it, it, it seemed like he knew what he was on about. So it was interesting for me to see that guy wheeling her out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It gets kind of. Um... And now I gotta want. Now I really want to watch this video. You should um, throw the link in there for me one more time so I can check it out. You got it, buddy. It's going to be in the Discord. It's actually down below and on uh, YouTube. It's already in there. All my links are already pre-filled, so you can find it right on the, the YouTube live stream. It's the one on the bottom, the very last one I put in. So it's already yeah. there. You got it, my man. I'll I'll, uh, I'll put it back in here too. Okay. So so I don't know. Like I said. Please don't take me wrong here, guys. I, I'm not vouching for this story. I don't know. I'm, I'm presenting it as we have some weirdness happening. So like Rohan stated, like I said, I think maybe we have a weird if. Okay, so knowing how information operations work, maybe this was to wash things out of a news cycle if they didn't have a crisis on their hands. And they have a crisis because Afghanistan is a shit show. And so now the lefty righty media is going to war and all hands are on deck. So it's possible, right? And this is what I mean by manipulating news cycles, that they set up things like this. I am not past the point where I think she could be like a CIA op. All right. And so it was set to be like, okay, so the end of the summer, we've got Anjali, right, with her story. And so we're going to use that to wash anything out of the media that we deem unfit. But something happened. Afghanistan happened. And so she becomes a casualty of the news cycle. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not past that. I think it's possible. And that's what I'm saying about all of this and why we should consider all of the things happening around um, exactly what's going on right now. That's all. So so uh, it's possible. I th I, I've considered that. And uh, she's worked for the government before and all the rest of this. And, and if you go back and watch that video, by the way, she tells you all her past. She's worked in intelligence. She worked with uh, the Bush administration, giving information to the Marines on the ground back in Operation, I think it was Desert Storm or Desert, whatever it was, Desert Shield, whatever that was. Anyway, she gives you her whole background there, if she's telling the truth. And it's come out that she's run for public office before, as well, as a uh, senator in North Dakota, I think. Anyway, yeah. there's, there's a lot of weirdness here, a lot of weirdness. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what else, Kelly? What else you got on this, my man? No, man, I just, that's about it. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there that, uh, yeah, that, you know, these uh, these things have been talked about, you know what I mean, the, the uh, mantis-type people. And I don't know, well, because nowadays, you know, she would, you know, she would probably be a better description of what most people would, you know, kind of can describe, you know, maybe later on of, you know, something new that they have never seen. But since throughout time, you know, now you probably have a more better description, you know, because people say, oh, they just had big bug eyes or they had, you know, you know, uh, or something to that effect, you know, but they don't really give a shape of the head or or anything like that. But, yeah, I mean, again, these I just wanted to point it out that, yeah, these things been on cave walls for thousands, thousands of years. And it's not like this is new, but who knows to what even like people only can speculate of what these things even look like. I mean, even if someone says that, you know, they like say the grays are right, you know, that's the correct, what these things look like, that could only be one. And, you know I mean? It could be, there's, I'm pretty sure there's been, you know, if it's, if it's, if that thing from, uh, that book from Rush is correct, there's been over 53 different types of species here. So, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see when and where, you know, I, uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, I'm always down for that too. Well, yeah, so you'll notice in her press conference when it starts in the first like 20 minutes, she mentioned, she's like, 
So I called a press conference to really bring in true disclosure. And where's the press? She, she cited it herself. Like, well, how come nobody's here? Like, what's going on? Like, you'd expect cameras. You'd expect Fox News, CNN. Nobody. Crickets. Right? UFO enthusiasts. That's all who showed up. Weird, man. Weird. There's something I miss here. Something wrong. Something wrong. So, yeah. I appreciate it, Kelly. Are you back, back for good or are you still traveling? No, man. I'm back for good. And I just wanted to... Um, I threw a couple pics on there about uh, my buddy had a... Just real quick, not off topic, but uh, that whale skull. I got a, one, another one I want to... Well, I think I, I pictured of us uh, with me in it, so you kind of give it a, a perspective on it. It was pretty big, but yeah, I'll be back, man. Okay. Glad to be back, um, you know, uh, joining the show. Fantastic. Glad to have you back. Safe travels, and uh, you, you don't need it because you time traveled past that. I didn't get to tell you when you left. <laughs> Welcome back, my friend. Looking forward to talking to you soon. Have a fantastic night. Thanks for spending your time with us. Uh, Rohan, anything else before we finish up? I think we've gone sufficiently long to make up for the uh, slow start tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, for we have. It's been a fascinating conversation. I really appreciated uh, some of the comments as well. So, yeah, that's, that's that's cool, man. It's hard to know, isn't it? But let's say it might be a double nothing burger. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the double nothing burger. That's a that's a new one, right? What, what, at what point? So when she shows up and there's no aliens there, that's the triple nothing burger. Oh shit! Here we yeah, go. It. <laughs> I think it was in Matt Chapman. I think he said uh, she'll just his prediction is she'll disappear. Yeah, right that's, before that's it. another it's good like, one, yeah. too. She yeah. completely vanishes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? You guys are the best. Thanks for hanging out with us. Like I said, uh, the interaction is better because you guys enrich the conversation because you bring up things I don't think of, and that's beautiful. So thank thank you, Rohan. Thanks, Kelly, for being here. And let's finish this up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smash some outro music. You guys are welcome to stay. You guys are welcome to bounce. We're just going to do our thing. You know what the deal is. We're going to play this. Usually we have Jay reading a quote, but, uh, well, tonight... I don't know. We just have Anjali, a press conference, the media not reacting as you would expect them to, and, well, us, confused. Confused as hell. (laughs) Let's call that the quote. (laughs) Anything else from you, gentlemen, before we finish up? No, man. Have a good night. Thanks, Kelly. You too. Rohan. Prediction. Uh, A prediction. Um, Tomorrow is another day. Yeah! I think you win. (laughs) Rohan Stradamus. The prediction is tomorrow's another day. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. If you enjoy this conversation, spread the word. Spread the word. Like I said, I'm agnostic here. I'm not trying to believe this. I'm not trying to not believe this. I'm trying to find some middle ground and find the weird truth that exists between true and false because I think it's out there. It's a... This is the world we live in now, and I think these conversations are deep and rich, and the more you think about it, the more it confuses you, and it should, because not because of me, because of the information out there. We're kind of an information overload, and uh, welcome welcome to the, what do you call this, the post-truth world. But anyway, thanks again to uh, Kelly Rohan. Uh, who else Who else called tonight? Robert, we got uh, Cal called, we got, uh, who else called tonight? I'm going to forget people, so I'm not going to, uh, Matt. I'm not going to, if I list everybody, I'll leave somebody out. So anyway, thank you for all the calls tonight. Like I said, if you make me throw a tantrum, I will do it one night. I'll just end this show right at 9 p.m. And you'll be like, man, Michael Strange is a little punk. What a baby. I'll be like, yep, on the couch watching Netflix and you guys are all butthurt thinking I'm a baby. And I'm having a hell of a time sipping whiskey watching Netflix. You'll see. You'll see. Go ahead and go ahead and tempt me, Rohan. Go ahead, buddy. (laughs) Thanks thanks for hanging out with us. I appreciate it. All right. As we finish, spread the word. Spread the word. If you like these conversations, if you like learning about things you never would have found, uh, that's my job. That's what I do. I mean, it's not yet. Let's make it that. Let's let's blow this mf -er up, and I'll just do this all the time, and I'll find nuggets of information, try and find weird synchronicities with the press and uh, with some strangeness, and let's talk about it. Let's have a good time. Thanks again. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Robert, in the Facebook chat. for uh, Thanks, Ronald. Uh, you guys for hanging out, being uh, the Roberts uh, on uh, the other, both Roberts. Everybody else, Jennifer, thanks for showing up. Uh, weirdness. Listen to the show if you didn't hear it, because I'll tell you what, there's some weirdness going on. But as we finish, you know the drill. We're done for tonight, and that means that's the bad news. The good news is, God willing, we'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific. Be sure, be strong, 
a be true Rohan final prediction my friend uh, no, you got it. I'm not doing predictions tomorrow's a new I'm day Tomorrow. Thank Ow. you for listening. Do smiling for you. <laughs> there you go. Ow. Thank you for listening. From our trouble minds to yours, have a great night. <laughs>